What is up, everyone? How y'all doing? And welcome to The WAN Show. We've got a great show lined up for you today. No, really, it's a great show, yeah. and I will have no hot takes. I will make no one angry. Our first topic will be, I made you guys angry. And he had hot takes. And there were hot takes, <laughs> and um, you guys you guys are right to be mad. Um, yeah. And Luke owes everyone an apology. <laughs> you have one job. Protect me from myself. Yeah. And you couldn't do it. Nope. Speaking of having one job, YouTube, your one job. Take care of creators. Share with creators. Partner program. YouTube is shorting creators. Pun intended. We'll be talking about that. What else we got today? Uh, Anchor comes clean about Yuffie. Do they really? Do they fully? We'll talk about that. Yeah, Also, we will. Microsoft launches new AI-enabled Bing and Teams. I don't think anyone could have seen this coming. Certainly not anyone on this show. Nobody. Nobody. Oh, you know what we didn't test before the show, Dan? The intro. The intro. Let's see. Let's see. He retooled the whole thing. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to see his face if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Why does this keep... Why are you doing that? <laughs> I'm not. Oh, you're trying to yeah, get this most broken. That's me. That's me. The <laughs> genuine glee on his face when it worked was fantastic. Uh, the show is brought to you today by Vessi, FreshBooks, and Jump Cloud. All right. Okay. Well, I automated that was it. Mostly fine. Oh, it's automated. Cool. Good job. Um. Let's go Fancy. ahead and jump right into our first topic. We've got a special guest this week, but he's not joining us just yet. That was a glitch. Don't worry about that. <laughs> first, I want to talk through a little bit of what's happened over the last Wait, hold on. He spent a lot weeks. of time on this. That wasn't a glitch. You did that. What? No, it was definitely a glitch. You have to be honest. I mean... Integrity is important. I can tell That's from... That's going to be a topic of the show. I can tell from the chat comments that that was obviously a glitch. Uh, I don't know about that one. All right. Fake news. So first order of business, I think, is for me to kind of run through, um, you know, what happened last week. All right. I have self-identified three major screw ups. Screw up number one was not watching the video ahead of time. I mean, if we're going to respond directly to someone's comments, yeah, I think it's fair enough that we should probably hear what they are. Number two was framing the segment as responding to a critical callout instead of just framing the segment as further clarifying our React channel plans. I actually think if we had just changed the framing to, hey, we want to clarify our React channel plans further, uh, there's been some concern in the community. Would have been a lot better. Uh, I think it would have been fine because there was honestly almost nothing in the segment that really disagreed with like anything. Problem number three... So, first, I'd like to apologize to Dark Viper. Um, no, no, he's not here yet. <laughs> first, I'd like to apologize to Dark Viper. Another glitch. Second, I'd like to apologize to the audience. And third, I'd like to apologize to our new WAN show writer, who, and this is where I'm going to kick off our segment. We've got the one and only Dark Viper joining us on the show. I'd like hey. to apologize to our writer because I think we're about to start on a spicy note here. I actually think she did a really good job of summarizing the video, and I know that that's not something that you necessarily agree with. Still so, need to watch the video anyways. I know. Yeah. But she did do an excellent job. Uh, oh, if, if you want me to just... Yeah, yeah, I, jump I right in. Let's go. I, Let's go. I just think the combination of the way that it was phrased, um, the at least the first thing that was said, along with the title, implied that I was, like, attacking you. I was making a drama attack video. And as a person who's being characterized as a person who likes to start drama with creators, and it's not something I like to do, actually, um, I, I didn't appreciate it. I, I realized it wasn't sure. the intent for you to categorize it that way. And you perhaps, as you say, would have changed it had you seen the video. But uh, that's the way it felt to me. And so I wasn't I think that's, valid. that's totally fair. And I think the problem is that we're not even supposed to read the title. The title in here is just for to have a title for the topic. 
we don't actually read it live on the show. Um, so, <laughs> so we ended up in a bit of a pickle over the very framing of the segment because what's been really interesting to me uh, in the way that I process videos, which I have talked about at length last week, um, in reading the community's reaction to this entire thing is how mad people think everybody was when, as far as I can tell, you were never mad and then I was never mad. And then I don't think anyone was ever mad because fundamentally we seem to agree on just about every point with respect to React content, except the actual definition of React content. At best, I was disappointed. And at least maybe in the moment when writing uh, a response to what was happening, maybe I was a bit tiffed. But calling me angry or mad was a, certainly a stretch. Um, and, and as I say, in the video itself, towards you uh, talking about what you uh, said about your channel, I was certainly not mad. Uh, I certainly still hold the same uh, venomous sort of comments towards reactors in general. But what you're talking about, what you want to create, doesn't seem to be the thing that I normally criticize anyway, yeah. and which is something that I highlighted in the video. And I compliment you a few times as well. Yeah, I've I've watched it. I've so I've I've oh, watched yeah. it now. Some people in the audience might not. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, well, so that's another thing is it was very interesting uh, seeing how many people were jumping into this, clearly not having watched the first WAN show segment, your response, or the follow up WAN show segment, because <laughs> I sat down on my Saturday once I'd kind of like chilled out a little bit over people sort of jumping down my throat about this. And I watched the whole thing and ignoring the lol mm -hmm. didn't watch it tone. Um, it was just kind of like, yeah, here's our plan. And you were like, yeah, this is their plan. And unrelated to their plan, here are some problems with React content in general, the way that I define it. And then I came out and I kind of went, yeah, these are, this is fair. But, you know, as we kind of outlined, that's not really our intention. And hey, it's, I'm really glad that we talked about these things. And here's some ideas for how YouTube could turn this into a less toxic thing for the community overall. See you later. And so throughout all of this, the big problem was A, the framing and B, the fact that we were like, yeah, we didn't, we didn't watch it. Um, even having watched it, I don't actually have a ton more to say so the main reason that we brought you on the show is just for me to say like sorry dude um but I mean, there's yeah, a few as, things we can talk about but there's not actually much when it, when it happened i was like i was surprised it got mentioned at all like i think if you'd watched the video you'd be like why are we talking about this why is this a thing that we need to bring onto the show like as as i said before like if um if the sub if the segment was just here's some general ideas that have been floating around about the react channel that we're about to make and you just talked about it in that context would have been fine. It's just that it that you framed it as a response to me and most of what you talked about talked about wasn't what I talked about in the video <laughs> and it and as if it was framed as an attack on you, it was just uh mixed messaging. Yeah. Confusion. Lines got crossed. You know? I got what yeah. sorry? I said lines got crossed. Oh, oh, I thought you said Linus got crossed. And I was like, yeah. no, because the thing yeah. is, I was never even Fight. mad. <laughs> like looking at the summary, the first thing it said in my summary was he was generally positive about everything. And I was like, okay. Like, it didn't actually feel like drama to me in the first place. I think we might have, I was probably just in like kind of a, so Spice makes new writers, new writers, uh, acquaintance, you know, this is an anonymous person, so I'm not going to disclose anything about them. They're still on their pro in their probationary period here. So after, after 90 days, uh, we, we start talking about people's names because otherwise it makes it really awkward if people don't make it through the probationary period. Um, but what they said was watching it, um, Linus seems like he needs a nap. And there's no doubt last Friday that I probably needed a nap. Uh, <laughs> it was not great. Um, one thing that I definitely want to uh, address is that you corrected my understanding of the H3 ruling. I had misunderstood why the ruling went that way. So I was really glad about that. Um, and one of the points that I hadn't come across yet was your point about how live streamers haven't vetted the content, so they have no way of knowing uh, whether or not what they ultimately do will be fair use. Um, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit. That is one of my things that I wanted to kind of, not debate, but maybe try to reach a consensus on is how do you define then um, vetting? Because this whole situation is actually kind of a really interesting analog for how I would expect our React content to ultimately work. 
So I, the reactor, would not vet the content in all likelihood because one of the foundational things for me in all of our content is that I like to preserve as much genuineness as possible. So even for something like a fully scripted, pre-prepared video where we're looking at some Xbox development kit or something like that, I will, I will I'll put on my blinders as I walk past the person's desk who's working on it and go out of my way to not even look at it until I land on set. And when they ask me for guidance about like how to prepare it, I'll answer in general terms and I'll be like, look, don't tell me too much. I don't actually want to look right at it. But yeah, I think that's pretty important or that probably won't be. So if somebody else vets it, where do you feel that lies on the, on the fair use spectrum? Oh, well they'd still be a part of your team. I, I, like Reaction content can kind of be split into two broad categories. One where it's done after the facts, where nothing is presented to an audience without it already having been seen, edited. You, you're just using the parts that you need. You come to the other person's content with some specific idea of what you want to create. That's on one side. And there's another side, which is a lot of what happens in live streaming, where it's just like, oh, that thing's popular. I haven't seen it yet. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Um, the first part there, has a good fair use argument often. The second part doesn't really. You're not coming to it with a specific idea of how you can create something new, how you can transform it. It's just, this thing's popular. Maybe I say some things, maybe I don't. And let's just keep watching YouTube videos and let's all be entertained. It's more about the, um, you know, the bringing together um, curated content and watching with an audience rather than creating something new from that content necessarily. Um, there's a an AI VTuber. Uh, I was just going to ask you what content. you thought about that. Yeah. And, and her viewership, well, her, it, whatever, viewership doubled from like 2,000, uh, 2,500 to 5,000 just by showing random clips. So clearly it's not necessarily just the reactor oh. making something amazing by watching clips. Yeah. But in, in your case, with a, uh, like it would still be curated in the sense that by the time it reaches the audience, anything that's in the video has been um, specifically tailored to be necessary for what you're creating, um, which is not the case with live stream VODs or um, when they get ripped to YouTube, for example. So I would still say that is vetted content um, in right. the vein of that first category of reaction content, which because, is something I don't usually criticize. Like I can tell you right now, the video that we shot right before we recorded WAN show last week reacting to cringe tech commercials, I hadn't seen the vast majority of them before we sat down to record it, but it was absolutely vetted. It was vetted by someone and it's going to be edited to only include the parts that we are going to be specifically uh, providing commentary on. Um, and so, yeah, and I think... necessary for the commentary to make sense. And so and I... you came to it with a specific goal. Well, yeah, so I but. think it's... I think Also, it's like, they're commercials, which from my understanding is any, any content that exists for the sole purpose of promoting a product or service from a commercial entity is pretty much fair game. Um, you know, you guys literally created this only to get eyeballs on it. So if anything, I'm helping you, you're welcome. Uh, which is which is not an argument that you can make about something that is being created um, for 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 personal enrichment and the enjoyment of the audience, like something like a like a like a uh, like a like a nonfiction, like a oh my god, like a, a video essay. Sure, sure, a video essay or like a, a comedy sketch or something along those lines. Mm. Now, I think. Once again, um, you know, back to back to my my whole thing about how the way that I process content is often through reading the comments. Um, I do want to talk about that again, and I know that I'm probably digging myself into a hole here. I did not do a good job of explaining that last week. The main reason why he wants to go over this again is because he's, he's not going to stop doing it. No, I'm not going to stop doing it. Yeah. And the reason I'm not going to stop doing it is that what it does is it distills videos down into what's actionable for me. I don't watch YouTube for entertainment. I only really need to know what the audience's interpretation of the content was. And so whether I look at the original WAN show or whether I look at your video sort of responding to it, or whether I look at our segment on the following WAN show that was definitely responding to it, but also really only framed as definitely responding to it, was more sort of responding to it. The comments actually tell me everything that I need to know as a creator, because the nuance of what you said 
was very likely lost on the viewers who a weren't paying attention to you and b never watched what i said originally anyway and so in terms of what i need to address in my talking points for my following show it's their misunderstandings it's whatever their interpretation of your video was and so for that reason i'm sorry i'm not going to stop I had a meeting with Riley and the Land Show writer this week where they were like, for the love of God, Linus, watch the videos. And I'm like, yeah, if we're responding to something directly, I will. We'll make time. We'll figure it out. We'll make a way to do it. Or at worst, you guys can put direct quotes in, include timestamps. I can watch the relevant parts. We'll respond to that and we'll just kind of ignore the rest of it or whatever the case may be. We'll f depending. Like if someone makes a two hour, a two yeah. hour rant. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give you an hour of my time at 2x speed or whatever that works out to. Usually I can only process about 1.75x. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a seasoned 2x watcher. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that my, my primary takeaway from a video is almost always the community response. Which is why it was so clear after last week's WAN show reading the comments under that WAN show that we had to have you on you and we had goofed. to deal with this because yeah. I screwed up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, I could say a lot of things in regards to that, but you've, uh, <laughs> you have in other cases on this very show talked about how you don't like people to put words in your mouth. Yes. And certainly comments will often put words in the mouth of the person who made the video. And you talked even recently about how you wanted to remove comments that don't finish the video and yes, still write a comment and misrepresent what's in the video, don't understand the argument. A lot of comments frustrate me no end. I'll read my comment section and a person will write like a half a page in response to the video. And I'll be like, did you watch the video? And they're like, no, fuck you. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I think you mean um, and, you. and it, it's very there frustrating. <laughs> like I can totally understand the comments um, alongside the video. Cause sure. you're right. The audience response is, is quite important, but it doesn't often replace the video itself in terms of how it characterizes things, especially my comment section underneath that video, like uh, I've been talking about reaction content for like three years. And so the people who've been with me for that long have that wider context. And a few comments in the comment section are probably just going to confuse you. Why are they talking about all these things when, um, how could that all have been fit into a 20 minute video? And they're talking about things that may have happened in a completely different video. And you wouldn't have that context. And especially if you're not going to watch the video, you aren't going to know how accurate those comments are. Are, are they mischaracterizations of the content in the video, or are they perfectly accurate? Um, you know, as you, it is still important to address it either way, but the context of the video seems quite crucial um, for the comments to make sense. Oh, absolutely, sort of. So one of the things that reading through the comments on the video actually gave me was a ton of context from your previous videos. So it actually, that, that, that knife definitely cuts both ways because- I it, think if you're, if you're responding to something yeah. on the show, if you're yes. responding to something officially, you need to actually watch it. That, I think- No I argument think there. Arguing no, that there no, is no value argument there. to uh, ab absorbing stuff from the comments is also fair, Yeah. but just like, yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Where were you last week? Saying that, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I disagreed with you on the comments thing last week, but I just like didn't really care much because I don't you, really you care much. You did push back a yeah. handful of times. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I, that's just, fair. That's if, fair. If he wants to, no, I know he doesn't really watch YouTube. So like, what, what am I going to do? I'm not going to convince him to, <laughs> to start watching a bunch of videos. He's never watched a lot of videos on YouTube. It's, it's to, always to been be kind of surprising to me, but. I have clicked videos and then read the comment section and then on the basis of that determined whether I want to watch the video at all. Well, but, you know, I haven't then, you know, gone on to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the core problem. It's not it's not really so much yeah. absorbing stuff well, that way in general. Well, it's the framing, right? So if you were to if you were to then talk about that video and say let's say Mr. Beast made a video uh, you know, curing people's blindness. Let's say you were to say something like that and um, you know, I haven't had a chance to check out the video yet, but what's shocking is that the community response is really split two ways on this. And it's brought up this really interesting debate about, you know, the, the medical system, particularly in America and developing countries and, you know, the necessity of, you know, uh, you know wealthy people needing to come in and, and heal the blind anyway. Like, why is this even a thing versus the people that are just like, this is good. Just take it at face value. Uh, I think you can absolutely have a conversation, but it just needs to be framed correctly. It needs to be framed as talking about the 
community response and you just need to acknowledge that you are not responding to the video. You're responding to uh, a, a, a rift or or a debate that's going on in the in the broader social media community. So I think it's it's a combination of things, but it all comes down to there were three clear cell phones and I'm going to own them. I'm going to own them. That's it. But I'm also not going to stop reading comments primarily as my way of consuming YouTube. That's And that's precisely why I didn't really push back that hard last week. It's like, it's just, it, he's just going to do that. That's fine. <laughs> you don't like need to watch YouTube. If you're going to respond to something that's on YouTube, you should watch YouTube. But like, yeah, yeah. In general, who cares? I mean, certainly when I wrote my first essays on uh, reaction content, I, I did put those essays underneath those videos, specifically for people like you who prefer to read things rather than um, watch the videos, especially because I was quite proud of those essays. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to change the world. You can't reach enough people. But, uh, you know. No, I think, I mean, I, that's something I do still take issue with, like anyone's perception that I somehow have the power to, to change this. Uh, it seems like there were a lot of people in the community that feel like, as a prominent creator, I can somehow impact the the the, the rising prevalence of React content. I really don't think that's going to happen. I think this is going to be one of those things like family vlogging, where it's going to take like a, a a a chain reaction of lawsuits from these kids that grow up and go, "Where the f is my money?" Uh, before that entire genre just implodes on itself. And maybe it takes a chain reaction of rights holders finally just getting fed up with this and going after prominent streamers in spite of the fact that they're going to face significant community backlash. Like, uh, I mean, you wouldn't know anything about that, but but that could be a total <laughs> thing. <laughs> Uh, painful, painful. <laughs> uh, to be clear, like it, it, back in 2016, there was a time where reaction content was just like bubbling beneath the surface. Like live streaming certainly hadn't taken off to the degree that it is now, uh, so big, and there's just so much reaction content on there. And so there was a time where a lot of the big creators did band together and go, "What are people doing sitting around all day watching other people work hard and then making a bunch of money?" whatever and, and like just like, here's a popular thing i'm going to re-upload it this is absurd and the community backlash was huge and some of the prominent reactors of the time did uh bail out uh what's changed is now like some of the biggest creators are themselves reactors and the more creators who start doing reaction content of any stripe certainly as i will clarify again what you're playing to do is not usually what i consider to be reaction content or criticize but that is in the same vein will be seen as a support of this entire ecosystem and it certainly won't help things i don't i'm not saying that you yourself can uh, st steer the boat in a 180 direction but uh you do have the ability to influence things influence the minds of people um, on basically any topic uh it's just it would take far more than you <laughs> to you know 180 this boat and i i accept that it, was, it takes more than me it would take you know, even mr beast coming out against it probably would well it have certainly impact but it wouldn't uh 180 the boat you know we're definitely going to be talking about mr beast and his capability for impact later on the show i he actually tweeted something yesterday or day before or something like that that made me just kind of go man this is going to be uh this is going to be this is going to be interesting um uh, well, 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 we'll talk about it a little bit later. Yep. Let me just see if there's anything else that Good I kind of... Did you have anything else in your notes that you'd wanted to kind of talk to us about uh, the, or get clarity on? The, the definition of reaction content, uh, you, uh, you seem to like a very broad definition. I'm not really sure why. Like, back, sure. back in the day, like, the video I made to you would be considered to be a response video. Uh, right. Yeah, and, but now I have people in the comment section being like, oh, this is just a reaction video. And it's like, my eyes react to the light. Are they reactors? My lungs react to my need for oxygen. Are they now reactors? Like this widening of the definition sure. only seems to like obfuscate things so that people who are doing truly unethical things can be just like, oh, it's all the same at the end of the day. But it's not really, you know, as I try and... It, the first thing I did when I started talking about this topic was uh, mm -hmm. try to distinguish between different types of reaction content and the stuff that I consider to be unethical. But uh, you seem to want to be like, no, it's all reaction content. I, uh, if <laughs> and, uh, I can throw I don't in, think that helps. If I can throw in here, I, th I had some some thinking about this since we yeah. talked about it. And I think a lot of the community approaches React content and specifically React, not reaction or reacting, just React content as okay. a filter for types of content. And I think Linus defies React or reaction or reacting or whatever, just the word in general as a uh, person of the craft who 
is not looking right. at categorizing it and is more looking at what are different things that people care about when they're watching how can we add value how can we improve this video stuff yes like how can we how can we create a connection with the viewer right but when you're talking to people about that sure that line gets weird because none which of them is are why doing i that. defined it when i initially talked about it you just defined it in a way that I, no one is currently using i defined it in a way that made it clear <laughs> what i was talking about sounds good yeah <laughs> I mean, Look yeah, within, within within that context, I suppose it's fine. But then, of course, when my video was summarized using a completely different definition of reaction, and that wasn't clarified, it did seem as though I was criticizing. Uh, sure, everything I mean, that you were talking about, your definition. But that's the thing is, I didn't really, I didn't really feel even even before I'd watched the video, which I have now. Even before I had, I didn't really feel like it was super critical because all it said was that you were you were concerned that it was not possible to create ethical reaction content. And so I came out and I said, well, here's how we would try. I mean, that's a fair, uh, that's a fair exchange. Yeah, off, off, in part, my objection was more just to the idea of summarizing a video and trying to respond to it. Um, oh, more and than, that's, it, that's more than fair. Yeah, we've, we've established that, we, we all agree. Yeah. Um, th there was one comment that um, Luke made last time talking about uh, Yeah, let's consent. go after Luke for a bit. That sounds oh, great. Yeah, no. I'm talking like, up on Luke. You, Dan, well, Dan, you, you're you in. Questions: How things could be unethical despite there being consent involved? Sure. And uh, it wasn't actually touched on in the response video I made to you because it is touched on in the uh, other videos. But um, consent doesn't necessarily make something ethical if it's uh, people involved are under um, a false impression of what value they're getting, or um, as you did point out that there can be coercion involved. Um, the, the example I like to use is like a, a person selling a stone for $10,000 that protects you from tigers. It can be the case that the person buying the stone perfectly consents to buying it. It can be the case that the person selling the stone actually believes the stone protects them from tigers. And, and so that's a per perfect consent there. And they both agree what the stone does. But as an out outside observer, you still wouldn't think that's an ethical exchange or a good thing for society that someone's selling a stone that doesn't actually work as far as we're aware, um, to protect that person from tigers. And, and so that's how I come at reaction content. Like, I consider reaction content... Uh... Yeah, I mean... Do you, do, you want, what, do you want to know why I brought that argument up, by the way? Did I coerce you into something? No, because I was trying to get you to stop talking about the video that you hadn't watched. It's fair. People people brought up that I did nothing, and I'm like, I was doing stuff! I repeatedly said we hadn't watched it, and then kept trying to bring this up. Uh, this type of things up, at the very least. <laughs> it just didn't work. He was like, no. Yeah, you were just, you weren't good enough. That's Wait, the reality. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think, I think part of, I think part of, I think part of where we ended up in trouble too was some of the community um, probably misinterpreted part of your video. I have to say, um, and this is this is kind of tough. I hope you take this in the best possible way. Um, there were parts of your video where your point wasn't entirely clear. Uh, you would use oh, yeah. a WAN clip that was not actually related to the point that you were making, and then go on to say something. So you'd say, "Set set up." then WAN clip that actually had nothing to do with the setup, then further clarify some position about React content in general that was nothing to do with the WAN clip. And that happened a I few mean, times. I, I, I disagree. Well, not entirely, but somewhat. <laughs> the video was sure. roughly, it was, it was roughly cut together, made fairly quickly. And I was trying to get out points that um, were from my notes, a video right. that I hypothetically wanted to make in the future. And so the, the clips, um, probably originally when uh, I made the video, probably made uh, like absolute, the context was fairly clear. But as I cut it further and further down, knowing that I have a hard time getting people to watch, you know, a 20 minute video, uh, let alone a half an hour video, whatever it was in, 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 uh, initially, it, it, maybe the context was lost. I, I don't think the context was entirely lost, but I do agree that at points it does seem uh, as if the connection was somewhat tenuous. If there was and, a non-critical uh, viewing of it, I think there are areas where it was it was quite easy to misunderstand. Uh, like for example, you've got a clip where I talk about how uh, it could be used as a way to uplift smaller creators. And then you go on to say how it's for business reasons. But you also used a clip like five or six minutes earlier in the video where I said, 
right up front, right from the beginning, this is for business reasons. But then yep. you proceeded to argue against my argument that it was to uplift smaller creators, but that was actually a small sidebar. That was more of a happy accident. Mm -hmm. And that was the way it was framed. And so if someone didn't watch our original video and only watched your res video response, let's call it that. Let's, let's use the old school oh, yeah. terminology. If they only watched your video response, it would seem like you were responding to me thinking that I was some kind of white knight who's going to swoop in and be one of those creators who makes the argument, the bigger I get, the bigger you're going to get, and it's going to be great for all of us, which is absolutely never what we set out to do and absolutely never something that even crossed our minds. So there were definitely points in the video, and yeah, I, I, I get it. Like, it's not always easy to cut something together perfectly, um, especially for something that was turned around so fast but after i had watched it i kind of went well i can see why people got this impression i can see why people came away in the comments with this idea because you were actually responding to something that or it seemed like it now i with all the context that i have know that that's actually not what you're doing at all you were more like you said summarizing the notes that you've been making over the last several months right with you as a bit of context. But that's um, what it seemed like. Yo, I, like, I don't th did, did people really come away from that video with a negative impression of you? I didn't mostly see not. Comments no, like mostly that. not. No, no I, 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 I thought enough. I thought enough was in there, especially with the end, although most people don't get to the end of videos, of course. But uh, I, I, I don't think yeah. <laughs> that, that's a big I, problem. Because <laughs> <actually, yeah, laughs> I, I almost didn't release the video because uh, I do think it wasn't uh, a focused on you enough. And a lot of what I talked about in relation to you was at the end. And I looked at the retention, like the average retention was like 10 minutes. So I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but that's almost uh, the problem with any video, I suppose. And the problem with reading the comments sometimes. So, but no, but the but, comments um, were not negative, but they misunderstood. That was, that was yeah. what I saw. So it's, it's fine. I think the bottom line is that, yes, I'm using the term react to contain content that would not necessarily be the kind of reaction content that I mean I agree with you is mm. is a cancer it's 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 a it's a malignant growth it contributes nothing and while I don't necessarily agree with your summary of the creator or attention economy entirely um, I think it's a I think it's a little more complicated than that I think you did a pretty good job of dumbing it down um, but I think if you and I were to have a 90 minute conversation off of this podcast, we could probably get into a lot more nuance about the attention economy. And I might go, well, not quite, Matt. I don't, I don't necessarily see it quite that way. And you might say, but this, and we might you come to some kind of creator have got to understand making things shorter and more digestible and understandable. Exactly. Ending, so. Um, what was I saying? It doesn't matter. The point is I'm good. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, it's been an enjoyable experience coming on the Wayne Show at all. This is, uh, I wouldn't say it was on my bucket list, but it, it should have been. <laughs> yeah. And you know um, what? I do want to say that you actually popped up on my radar before we did the segment on Wayne Show uh, because of your right series. Um, okay. And <laughs> even though I hadn't watched any of it, people here had. And as we were putting together sort of our ethical reaction content guidelines, uh, you were a guiding star for us. So I kind of wanted to pop that on you on the show so that you knew that even though I hadn't necessarily watched the, the video essay series, at least uh, two of us in the exec team already had and had already flagged your concerns. Um, some of it is stuff that I sort of intuitively was like, well, that's stupid. I just, I just think that's crap content anyway, and I just don't want to do it. Um, but other things were just angles, aspects of it that I hadn't considered. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you did the series because even though maybe it didn't get as many views as you'd like, or maybe it got more backlash than you'd like, or maybe it's frustrating because people are misunderstanding it or whatever, all the negatives that come out of it, um, you definitely influenced at least a couple of key people and you've definitely influenced our approach towards it, even if. Uh, you know, it might not be perfect every time, and we might not agree 100% every time. Uh, I think that you made a difference, if that helps at all. Yeah, that's very kind of you to say. Often my biggest issue is not that people disagree with me. It's that they don't even take the time to understand my perspective. Uh, they don't 
they don't watch the video and leave comments being like, oh, you must be wrong. Um, I spent a lot of time on that series. I spent like two months on it or something. And uh, it, it just frustrates me how many people uh, paint me as a drama whore or something, especially if you, if the, the context in which that series came out showed that was clearly not the case. Um, and so knowing, because I have received a lot of messages from creators saying, oh, this has completely changed my mind uh, on the perspective. And hearing that it has had some impact is nice. It's just, as you say, it's very hard to have um, like ecosystem changing impacts. Uh, oh, yeah. But it is nice to have some <laughs> impact, I suppose. <laughs> You've got a lot of fans here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if there was anyone that we could have inadvertently sort of beefed with, um, it seems like you were not a good choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. I, I, I don't uh, engage with that many content creators in general, but it has seemed that most of that engagement has been accidental beef. So maybe I am partly to blame as well. I, I, I wasn't going to uh, say it. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> I, I want to say I'm, I did allude to, at least somewhat in a joking manner, that your writer may not like me. That was a little bit of a joke. I want to apologize if I caused the writer any undue stress. Um, I think they're as all right. Say, I th yeah, I think they're yeah. all right. Yeah. I think, I think they're just, all right. Just to be clear. I probably caused yep. more stress than than you did, uh, but I by by mid Saturday I had basically sent out heartfelt apologies to everyone on our side who I had wronged in any way, um, and basically said like, look, we're, let's fix this, let's move forward. So I think I think that's pretty much it. I think it's time for us to move forward with the rest of the show. Uh, thank you so much for yeah. coming on. Uh, really appreciate it. Glad we got a chance to kind of bury the hatchet and and get this. At least to a point where we might not agree about what exactly React content is, but I think we can agree about what ethical content might look like in some kind of React iverse. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. And uh, seeing the behind the scenes was very fascinating as well. People are <laughs> definitely missing out. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Take care and have a good day, mate. Yeah, because it's morning, right? <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, it's, it's just gone to afternoon, but close enough. Oh, yeah. Dan, you screwed up. You put his camera in upside down. Oh, this I whole knew, time, I didn't I even knew I forgot something. You left, on, you left on the Southern Hemisphere uh, uh, correction. It's not supposed... Okay, anyway. All right, see you later. <laughs> see ya. All right. Why don't we jump into our next big topic of the day? Luke, what do you want to talk about then? Oh, wow. Why don't you pick something? Uh, anchor. You want to talk about Anchor? Yeah. All right. Because I'm still mad. Let's honest. talk about Anchor. Well, that, 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 you're, you're coloring the, the people's perspe perception. you got to let them decide for themselves. No. Yeah, I'm pissed off too, but like... They, they, can, got... they can have the right opinion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm the one with the ego. I'm the one with the problem. I think that's still true. <laughs> Anyways... Since whistleblowers revealed serious security flaws last November, journalists have been demanding answers. After a long series of fibs, inaccuracies, and omissions, Anchor has finally acknowledged that the footage on Eufy security cameras was not, as they claimed, natively end-to-end -end encrypted. It wasn't! What?! No way! No! Amazing! They now claim that they have addressed the issue with the Eufy web portal that made unencrypted camera live streams accessible without authentication and will be updating every Eufy camera to default end-to-end -end encryption via WebRTC. They state that only one device, the Video Doorbell Dual, was mm. sending and storing information on Eufy's cloud without user in initiation. Which it is too much. matter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. One is too many when you say it doesn't happen at all. But <laughs> carry on, we were both Mr. Lafreniere. We're both interjecting to say the same things. Like, hold on a minute. That, that's irrelevant. Um, <laughs> according to their statement, this was a copy of a setup image for facial recognition in case the user added an additional device or replaced their existing device. I don't care. They admit <laughs> that this was not in line with their local storage mission and the process has been removed. They stress that no facial recognition data was included and that they have no access to users' footage while using local storage and no access to users' biometric data whatsoever. Sure. Yeah, see, that's the problem, is this isn't about how the hardware works or what the policy is or anything. And they've already lied like or multiple the technical, times, so none of their statements have any value. It's about, do I believe you at all? Yeah. Go on. 
Yeah. Anchor has apologized for poor communication. Good. Uh, and confirmed plans to create a bug bounty program. Okay. Now tell me something. Did you read the statement? The statement? Yeah, that Anchor released. Oh, no. Okay. Then I'm ahead of you. I read the statement. <laughs> I didn't just read the comments on it, but I did read those as well. <laughs> Are you going over it now? It specifically, explicitly, is not an apology. I'm not surprised. Because that's what they did last time, too. It, but they actually... I read the last one. No, it's bizarre. Like, they go out of their way to say, this is not an apology. We will apologize later. That's weird. So... I, that's really okay, weird. Okay, if I were to take, if I were to take, <laughs> that's super weird. Like, if I were to take the statement at face value, okay, it seems like they want to get all their ducks in a row and provide the whole story alongside a heartfelt apology. Just, but from my point of view, it looks like legal butt covering. Yeah. That's the only reason that I can see, from a corporate standpoint, not to apologize because an apology is an implicit admission of guilt, of wrongdoing. Not as much in Canada, which is why we say sorry a lot. If they apologize, they're basically saying, we did something wrong. Whereas if they don't apologize, if they specifically <laughs> say, we're not apologizing, but we'll apologize later once we've got everything figured out, they're basically just stalling. Gipo839 in Philip Plain Chat said, this is not an apology, it's just a tribute. <laughs> Which is a very good reference. Um, I approve. I approve this tribute. Yeah, I, that sucks. That sucks a lot. I at this point, like, we're gonna get. I, I'm gonna skip the last couple notes. We're gonna go right into the discussion question. What will Anchor need to do in order for the community at large to accept their apology? Can we ever trust them again? A massive, like, brutalizing leadership change. Like, I can't imagine the 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 thing that steered this ship so far. I would ever trust again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's... Uh, but then, here's the thing. If they told you that everyone responsible has been axed, <laughs> would you even believe them? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, the, the problem is not even that they lied. That's part of the problem. That's, that's the problem is that they lied and lied again and lied about lying and lied some more. And then finally... When they absolutely they would apologize later. had their back to the wall, <laughs> they said, we're sorry that you're upset. We'll apologize once we're sure if we did anything wrong and what it was, and that will happen later. <laughs> the f*** are you talking about? Ridiculous. You don't... When you do something like okay, imagine this. When you do something wrong, you sorry, I need to I need to take stock of what exactly. I need to just review the footage. <laughs> happened there? Yeah, I need to. I need. I'm gonna have to check the. I'm gonna have to read the comments and oh. see if people think that I was in the wrong or your arm shouldn't have been there. I'll get back to you later with an apology. Elbowgate two. What is that? That's that's stupid. Yeah. If you actually own that you did something wrong. You apologize right away. You don't wait. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's much else to say here. I mean, right, we can put up a poll if you really want. So but like, wacky. realistically, I can tell you from my point of view, we are not taking Anchor back as a sponsor, yeah. as, a, as a business collaborator. It's not happening. And I, I don't know if this is true, but I'm going to yep. assume it was true. There was probably an opportunity for that to happen. Well, yeah, of course. But the ship has sailed. Well, yeah, the ship sailed the second that the security researcher said, hey, guys, this. And they didn't immediately go... Holy crap. We're going to fix this. Sorry. Massive oversight. Big patch. Yeah. Yeah. B -b 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 Even if that was a lie, it would have been the correct lie. I won't say anything is the right lie because there's no right lie, but there is a correct lie. But they couldn't even play the game. Yeah. 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 They couldn't even pretend. They're just like, nope. Uh, nope. This. This. this, this what, what? <laughs> If you don't want to be associated with the CCP, don't act like them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like, that, that, that's that, that's the reality, right? That's fair enough. Like from a, from a certain point of view, yes, okay. Every Chinese corporation has has some uh, pressure on them from the CCP, but there, that doesn't mean you have to actually behave just like them. When you're caught lying, you just lie more. Like I don't get it. 
Is there like something in the water in like Russia, China region? Like just, <laughs> I mean, not that frankly, um, <clears throat> Western leadership lies that much less. I mean, that's politicians. Or less I guess, at right? all, to be completely honest. I guess it's just, it's like the bald facedness of it, you know? Like they're not even, they're not even giving me any respect whatsoever. They're going, I didn't do that. <laughs> Right, you can't prove I did it. Yeah, I mean, they at least at least give me something plausible. Like, I'm I'm sorry, I have a rare condition that caused causes <laughs> muscle random muscle outs. spasms. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like it's like Tourette's, but for physical violence. Like, I just you know, isn't that a thing? I actually, no, I mean, I doubt so extreme that you would like hit people, um, but like it's. I don't know. At least make up something plausible, you know. Help me out here. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty straightforward. Should we jump into a more yeah. positive one? Yeah. Because yeah. I think this is actually pretty good. Yeah, YouTube let's do shorts. That. You know? YouTube you think is this is out. good? Because I'm mad. Oh. You go ahead. Okay. No, hit me. Hit me. Let's uh, go. YouTube let's go. has rolled out revenue sharing for shorts as of February 1st. Rather than uh, attaching ads to specific videos, YouTube will pool the revenue from ads that appear in the shorts feed. That pool is then split into a pool for fees and music licensing and mm -hmm. a pool for creators. Oh. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Because this is the way to combat TikTok. TikTok is just going to not respect copyright and not pay anything to license holders. And realistically, anyone operating in this hemisphere is not going to be able to get away with that. Yeah. So this is the way to make it so that shorts can contain copyrighted music. So you can actually have like clips from Rihanna and Drake, Taylor Swift, like whatever else, um, so that you can upload the same content to YouTube shorts that you could to TikTok. <laughs> And unlike TikTok, YouTube is actually going to share some of the revenue from that. So now that there's no huge disadvantage, other than TikTok's creation tools, but hopefully they'll catch up. So now that there's no huge disadvantage in your content, like you can't have music or whatever, hopefully there'll be a big migration to shorts, which should be more profitable and or force TikTok to actually compensate creators. So overall, everything you've said so far is good. I don't think I scrolled down far enough earlier when I was mm. skimming through this to see the caveats mm. section. Some of that is BS. We'll get there in a second, though. Um, I just read the, the first three bits, and I thought it was actually really cool. Anyways, shorts that use one music track will be taxed 50% of their views, the ad revenue for which is then paid to rights holders of said music. YouTube then takes 55% of the cut of the remaining ad revenue. And finally, the rest is split among eligible creators based on views. In summary, if YouTube Shorts makes just say $100 to make this easy in ad revenue, and 20% of those shorts use a song. So remember, if it uses a song, it's 50% of the views. But let's say only 20% of the shorts actually use a song, then the music industry gets 10 bucks. YouTube gets forty nine fifty, and the creators split forty dollars and fifty cents. There's some important caveats, though. A lot of this is based around the ad not playing before your specific video, right? So it assumes you're in the shorts feed. Okay, YouTube doesn't count views from outside said shorts feed. For example, if a viewer clicks on a short from a creator's library, not counted. What? What? <laughs> YouTube also doesn't share revenue from ads on navigation pages leading to shorts or the first ad that plays in the shorts feed if it comes before the first video. What? What? We asked a representative from YouTube. We did. And the We asked more logic... than one representative from YouTube, actually, <laughs> because YouTube has asked me respectfully to not just go live and make a video and crap on their policies and procedures um, and, and business um, without at least, you know, giving them a chance to ah. talk me down. Um, without at least giving them a chance to not do anything. So I said, hey, um, this isn't going to change anything because realistically, I, I've seen the pattern over and over again. I don't get attention unless I make a bunch of noise publicly, but I'll tell you what. I'll play along. I will go through the I'll go through the chain of command and I will raise my concerns with all the appropriate people before I go live with a denouncement of your extremely 
crappy two-faced approach to revenue sharing in shorts. Uh, so I did. It did nothing. Yep. And so we're talking about it. Yeah. So that was a big waste of time. I think next time, YouTube, I won't bother. Because it was clearly a waste of time. You guys are obviously wrong. You guys are obviously being disingenuous here. And it didn't matter. Because you don't care. Because I actually, I actually don't know what makes you care. And this is, this is an extremely dangerous step from my point of view. I don't know what is going on with YouTube leadership right now because Google somehow, and I, I, it almost feels like by accident, um, Google has somehow managed to be the one company that has successfully figured out the key to retaining their creators to maintaining those relationships and building a library of content that you guys come back to the site for time and, and time and time again. They're also the, the refuge for other dying platforms. An equitable, Vine dies, they come here. An equitable revenue sharing approach. And this is the first time that I've looked at something and gone, well, that was obviously, clearly something that should have been shared with creators. And you just went, no, I don't think I will. So here's the thing. Here's the big problem. Their argument for why that first ad, when you click into the shorts shelf, it used to be called, I don't know what they call it now, shorts something, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I don't know. feed. Know. Yeah. Their argument for why that first ad, when you navigate into the shorts feed, should not go into the pool is that they haven't interacted with a short yet. So there would be no way of knowing what short that that ad view should be attributed to uh youtube that's the whole point of pooling it remember <laughs> remember that whole deck that you went through with me for like 45 minutes explaining this whole system where you were going to compensate the music rights holders and then create these pools and then it would be a shared pool because the truth is we have no, unlike a normal video where you actually interact with the video and then there's a pre-roll and then there's a mid-roll and then there's a post-roll and whatever, where you can clearly say, okay, this viewer was retained by this video and these ads are associated with this video. The whole point of pooling it is that you can't do that. So riddle me this. Why would anybody click on the shorts feed if they weren't driven there by shorts creators, what makes you think that it was, it was you and you alone who is, was, was responsible for that interaction, for that ad view? There is actually zero rational defense. There is no logical defense for this because they already laid out the reason for everything being pooled. And, you know, okay, so why am I flipping out over this? They took my money. In reality, YouTube AdSense is already a fraction of our revenue. And of that, Shorts is a tiny, just infinitely small fraction. Not for everyone, though. This doesn't hurt me. We've got LTT Store. We've got LTX. We've got our direct sponsor relationships. Like, we're fine. Not even mentioned. We're 100% fine. Right there, though. Let's go. Flow plane! <laughs> We're fine. But this is not fine. And it represents just, like, what, it, what is going on over there? Like, Google was supposed to be the less evil tech giant, right? And certainly they haven't been always. But did you see how they handled the last round of layoffs? Not one, but multiple ex-Google employees reported getting an email laying them off while they're sitting in the hospital with their newborn child. And I'm sitting here going, even if that's legal. Are, I don't, I don't know how it's true inhumane. or real this is, but I read a, a short little story thing about someone who was traveling, uh, but they were in the States on a work visa and they got fired while they were traveling over email. So they they can't come back. So like their stuff, their car, everything is just like they're, they're getting one of their friends to like sell it for them. And they just have to like, yeah, I don't know. Really brutal. Yeah. So in a nutshell, um, 
this is a super slippery slope. And you know what? Honestly, I'm not expecting anything good to come of this. If anything, if I was Google, I would just kind of listen to my feedback and go, well, we just won't clarify that next time. We will just, we will just write the policy in such a way that it never raises this question. So and we'll say, we a... we'll say all ads displayed between short videos um, are, are eligible for the pool. And then just quietly, just, well, we'll just put some ads at the beginning. But they, they weren't between, they, they weren't between anything. So, um, then we just need Spiffing Brit to figure it out for us. I, I don't even, I, this is probably because I don't watch enough shorts, but I don't even get it. Like, if I click on a short, like if I if I'm on the YouTube app thing and I click on a short, it doesn't immediately play an ad, right? It plays the first, it plays the short that I click on. Uh, yo, no, but if you from the YouTube app, if you just click shorts, if it plays an ad before it plays a short, they go, well, that's ours. That wow. had nothing to do with shorts creators. That's obviously wrong. That was all us. <sighs> Absolute bullshit. Hundred percent. And yeah, I was trying. I was trying to pick a, a lift me up topic, I man. Know. It didn't work. And the discussion question here is like, why act in bad faith over such a petty amount of money? That actually is a really good question, because compared to traditional well, ads, I do not expect the shorts fund in general, the shorts pool in general, and I especially do not expect this small percentage of ads that they're displaying before they actually play a short to even make an impact. So why carve it out? It's ludicrous. Yeah. <laughs> Just... I, 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 I have no idea. I, I want to kind of assume that it has something to do with like shareholder happiness because stocks in general for a while have been a little i as far as i know they're going slightly up recently i don't know i mean that's the it's thing been though. a little brutal like that's the thing that's what i'm talking about with google right now though it's like they're still a company that's making literally billions of dollars a quarter and they're sitting there going okay we need to we need to cut this cost we need to we need to squeeze blood from this stone here we need to you know whatever and i'm looking at it going like no the reason you guys just brought the founders back in is because of the uh, of the absolutely existential cri like threat that is chat gpt and ai chat assistance this doesn't even register yeah why why are you fighting such a ridiculous battle and I, honestly i don't even think i don't even think a shareholder this wouldn't merit mention on a shareholder call anyway yeah i don't know i don't know I don't know. And I, uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, Tom XYZ goes, Google missed earnings per share by 12% this quarter. Right. That's but, not going to make up 12%. Yeah, it, it won't. It will do absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things for Google. And in spite of th that big miss, big, big problem, Google made billions and billions of dollars this quarter. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm maybe I'm just not getting it. Yeah. Maybe I'm not getting it. Yep. You know what'll make me feel better? Telling you about our sponsors. Nice. Nice. Uh, where the heck are they? <laughs> ah, yes. The show is brought to you by Bessie. Wet socks. <laughs> Wet socks, Luke. They suck. Yeah, they, they suck. Why would you want wet socks? But don't worry. Vessi's on the case. Vessi says their shoes are made of 100% waterproof materials thanks to their Dymatex technology. Now, obviously, in the very long term, you could, you could put a hole in them or whatever, and they wouldn't be waterproof anymore. But we're pretty impressed by how darn water resistant they are. And it's, that same, it's the same technology that keeps your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Their new Storm Burst shoes combine the comfort of a sneaker with the grip and coverage of an outdoor boot. And Vessi has added extra layering for warmth and extra grip to keep you grounded in all weather conditions. I just want to clarify, when we say grounded, we're not talking like, <laughs> like anything to do with ESD safety or lightning strikes or anything like that. It's like to keep your feet 
on the ground instead of your butt. Uh, the storm bursts are easy to take off and put on thanks to their handy pull tabs. So say no to soggy socks and say yes to springtime adventures. Check out the Vessi storm burst and other styles at vessi.com slash wanshow and use code LTT for 15% off your entire order. Ran into one of my badminton friends who's wearing Vessis. I'm like, hey, nice Vessis. Use code LTT to save 15%. He goes, nah, dog. I'm like, I try to help you. I try to help people, okay? <laughs> the show is also brought to you today by FreshBooks. I'm guessing you're not an accountant. Statistically speaking, you probably aren't. Working on your books can bring up difficult questions like, what numbers go in what column? And what report should I run? It's a difficult question. What number goes in what column, Luke? Help me. It's hard. Yeah, A goes in the first one, right? That's not a number. You no, but, it's, number but it is the first column. column in a spreadsheet. But you said what number you goes in what column. You smart you said what number goes in what column? Yeah, I'm just messing with you. Come FreshBooks on. is an easy-to-use accounting software that makes it simple to send invoices and collect your cash. FreshBooks was created specifically for both business owners and accounting professionals, and it hits that sweet spot between usable and useful. Plus, it keeps your income and expenses organized so you won't be begging your accountant for help the day before taxes are due. It has everything you need to manage your books, like invoicing, expense and time tracking, automated payments, and reports to tell you how healthy your business is. Just head over to FreshBooks dot com slash when to save 90 percent on your first four months finally the show is brought to you by jump cloud jump cloud is an open directory platform the it backbone for your organization it makes it possible to centralize your technology stack across identity access and device management in a cost-effective manner it also helps you manage the proliferation of identities created by the cloud and software as a service applications i know right it's been a whole thing for us lately. Um, use Jump Cloud then to handle identities and access with maximum ease and maximum security. You can decrease IT expenses and ongoing costs and scale your organization with confidence without massive tech overhead and infrastructure or people and meet strict and increasing regulatory and compliance requirements all from the same platform investment. They've got support for Mac, Windows, and Linux no matter the platform, so Jump Cloud has your back. Try it out today using the link in the video description. Are you going to manage to pick a positive topic for a change? No. Can I trust you to do uh, this? But someone, someone in Flip Plane Chat uh, named This Past Winter uh, said something that I think is actually kind of brilliant. Um, I'm going to start making shorts that are reactions to ads that YouTube plays before shorts. <laughs> oh, where's your defense now, YouTube? What's <laughs> up? What's up now, YouTube? <laughs> I, Got him. I wanted to talk about, and, and maybe we will anyways, but maybe not right now. I wanted to talk about Blizzard penalizing players who regularly play with cheaters. But the, Yeah, the I want to talk about that. The topic is not filled out. I can just read from the source. That well, I don't think the topic's going to get any more filled out than it is now. True. Okay. Going that the, for it. That the true, true. Uh, the Overwatch 2 team is... Uh, frustrated with the amount of cheaters. Apparently they've banned, uh, where is it, 50,000 accounts, I think? Wow. Over 50,000 accounts have been actioned, whatever that means. Um, I think that might be a range from temp bans to permanent bans, whatever. Uh, since launch, the Blizzard has apparently had enough to the extent it's no longer just targeting the cheaters, but those who go along with them. Awesome. So if you see someone cheating on your team... You need to like well, it's, book it out it's, of the. It's saying who regularly play with cheaters. I suspect it's going to have something to do with the partying system. Ah, um, so if you kind of go, well, I'm not cheating. <laughs> this, this but I'm a, hiding behind a tank who has infinite health or whatever. This is a big deal for games that have any form of ranking system, right? Or have any form of. Uh, uh, external say, say you were playing some form of game where you could gain a lot of some type of resource whether it's like loot or money or whatever um, from demolishing a bunch of enemies well if you play with a cheater who does that then you can gain all that resource if you're playing a game where you're trying to rank where you're trying to play competitively you can boost your account by playing with someone who's cheating to get your account boosted there's right. a lot of different benefits that you can get from getting carried by someone right so cheating. if you just have some like random account and you're just like, yo, but yo, buddy, play play this one and party up with me. Let's go. Yeah. So hammering down on people like that. Also, making it so that kind of forcing the community to do this, which is good. Start to um, self police. Yeah. If you figure out that your buddy's cheating, like, hey, stop. Get him to stop. So then you don't want to get banned. What's the difference between this and like the social credit system exactly? Oh come on. <laughs> 
It's okay, okay. I was I was being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, but, but you you shouldn't want to play with people who cheat. I have read online sentiment of people who are like, "Well, I'm not cheating. I don't like loot their kills, or I don't uh, sure. I don't I don't whatever. I don't interact in whatever way, so I don't really care." And it's like, no, that's BS. You should stop playing with them. And yeah. you should like pressure your friends to not cheat in games because it's it's stupid. Unless obviously it's single player games that can be. Fun I gotta whatever. tell you, I I don't play with cheaters. Games. I had a, I had a mixed doubles partner that I was playing with for a while in badminton, and at a tournament on a on a match point, I watched them make an obvious bad call, um, and I was just like, yeah, I mean, I hope it was worth it to you, but I'm never playing with you again. I just don't do that because if you don't respect. The spirit of competition. So it, Why are we all doing this? So What's the was, point? It was like in and they said it was out Clearly or Clearly in yeah. and they called it out. Yeah. yeah. And the, the way it works in a rec tournament where it's not, you don't have like, you know, paid officials or anything like that is the call is up to the person whose side it lands on. And it's an honor system. But from my point of view, they basically just demonstrated they have absolutely no honor whatsoever. Yeah. And, and you don't want to be associated with that. I don't want to be associated with that. Yeah. Like I'm... The thing is, like, so my, my reputation means a lot to me. When I call something out, I want people to go, well, it must have been out then. Yeah. So I will go, I will go out of my way. If I'm not sure, if I am under 80%, 85% sure, I just go, just take it. Always. And I, I don't think this is going to work, though. I don't think that, I don't think they're going to be able to police this in... I think it will I think it, it will work consistently. I think it will work somewhat. You think so? There are absolutely people in a wide variety of games, probably more games than you'd even expect, that will pay for carries consistently. Um and I I think that is gonna be trackable. Do I think it's gonna be a huge number of people? Probably not. Um No Bad Cheer and Float Plane says in Escape from Tarkov, a game I have played but suck at, so I understand what you're talking about at least, but <laughs> Um, it's common practice to pay a cheater to clean your server and yep. loot everything. Yep. So like, so they'll just they'll just whiz around and kill the entire lobby, and then so all the players will die, and then any AI that spawns in, they'll just kill them, and they'll just tell you where all the loot is, and they can, they can like scan the entire map, see where all the high value loot is. They can see all the loot that's on different players that they killed. So they just tell you where to go. You pick everything up. And then you're just and chatted you just, out and... And you exit with all your money, all your quest completion, all your progress, everything you needed. They can even, like, they can, they can the set point? their... They can set their targeting system so that the cheater shoots people's legs. So they become, like, borderline immobilized. You can kind of hobble around, but that's it. And then the player can go around and pick and them get off. get kills. Yeah. Like, it's super brutal. And there's, there's... Have you had that happen to you before? That exact scenario, I honestly don't think so. Right. But I have died from cheaters many times in Escape from Tarkov. It's it's a reality of playing the game, to be honest. Right. It's it's not like it's not constant. Um, like I don't think we've ever had that happen when we were playing. Not that we could tell. Not that we could tell. That's a big problem with it, is when when it happens enough, it adds a reasonable level of doubt yeah. of the legitimacy of the other player. Yep. So if something happens that's like desync, right? server desync so they they kind of chopped on your screen oddly or something like that and it's just it's just server problems but to you it might look like they're speed hacking yeah for sure and you die to it so you're like oh that's a cheater but no it's just some server problem or or maybe something weird happened you didn't realize it maybe the person that actually killed you was like way off on the side but you don't know that because they have no replay system they have no uh overwatch or is it called overwatch whatever the system that counter-strike has um where this is an amazing system and way more games need this type of system. It's fantastic. Um, but Counter-Strike has this, this thing where you can watch gameplay because you know how with uh, Counter-Strike you can like replay games because mm -hmm. it logs all the information, not as a video, but yeah. as an, a file yeah. and you can replay it back. So you can watch gameplay from those players um see if they were snapping to you or whatever else. Yeah. And some like streamers and stuff will just do it as like a fun content tool. Sure reacting to cheaters killing me or whatever yeah and it will and because you can yeah you can replay your match and then if more games had that you would get more legitimate reports because i guarantee you there are times in escape from tarkov for example i have reported players yeah that were legit 
I don't but know just that. Good. But just out of the amount of times I've reported people, I am certain it has happened. Right. Maybe it was a desync issue. Maybe Sorry, it was brother. Someone different. Yeah, I don't know. And I hope if they were legit, they didn't get banned. I'm sure they didn't because the amount of people that aren't legit that aren't banned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but I'm also sure that I have reported that people that that are cheating. So I don't know. It would be better if I could watch the map back. Maybe maybe once the entire thing was fully completed and the map was fully closed, you could finally watch it back. Um, but Sorry, being able to sec. see... Yeah. Hey Dan, if you're going somewhere, may I have water, please? Being able to see how things happen uh, and being able to get more <laughs> legitimate reporting. <laughs> <laughs> be able to get more legitimate reporting would be good um and and i think there should be ways and i can think of a lot of games where there would be a way for this i believe overwatch has loot boxes i haven't played it in a long time it did last time i played it uh make it so that like oh if you get a bunch of success like if you do that system where you review gameplay yeah and you vote the the way that it ends up being like decided yeah you like once you do like 10 of them or something correctly you get a loot box or something yeah like try to incentivize, incentivize people it. to engage in the system in this kind of community policing i guess because no one's going to like as much as we all want to say it none of these developers are going to solve this problem you yeah. cannot solve cheating in video games yeah we were actually we were having a conversation about this not on when show a little while ago and just talking about how sophisticated cheating methods are already today mm -hmm. and how we are already at a point where you actually cannot stop it. I mean, there, there, there already exists systems where you can just have a mechanical arm moving an actual peripheral just connected to a, a normal system. The system has no cheating software running on it whatsoever. You can just use screen capture. And, and then, you can even do external screen capture. Like there, there are ways to do it that it is one hundred percent legitimately impossible to detect. So, like, okay, sure, there are also cheats that are possible to detect, and I'm sure there's lots of games game developers uh, that could do a better job. But continuing that argument is not super useful. I think the more useful argument is adding more tools for the community to be able to self police. Um, as much as it can. I actually like this initiative because it incentivizes people to not play with friends of theirs that they might know are cheating. Yeah, um, turn and them into a pariahs. It, it will also get them to be like, kind of question people that are acting super suspicious. Be like, bro, like, are you cheating? Because I don't want to get banned with you if you are. Yeah, so basically it's the social credit system. <laughs> I can't believe you're defending this. I like it in this case. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and, and adding... So in, that's the in line for you. <laughs> video yeah, game yeah, cheating. Yeah, video games. That's where you'll accept a surveillance state. <laughs> yep. Um, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> uh, and adding systems like that, like that Counter-Strike system where you can review gameplay. Even, even just... Even if it's not the Overwatch or whatever it was called type of system that Counter-Strike had, even it was just being able to view a gameplay, uh, 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 sorry, view a replay yeah. of the game that you can see from any perspective and then being able to report on your own from that view. Yeah, that'd be a total, total That's enough. game changer. Because there's a bunch of times in, in Tarkov specifically where I'm like, that was really suspicious, but I have no idea. And if I could just watch it back, yeah. I would make my decision then. Yep. But right now I'm just going to report just, it because Yeah, like, you're bl you're blind. Yeah, well, I don't you're in know. In the dark. Yeah. Uh on that <sighs> note, Mr. Beast for president. <laughs> this week, Mr. Beast released a video where he paid for a thousand blind people to receive cataract surgery, and a lot of people are big mad. Um Okay, so let's unpack that. Yeah. Uh, this kind of philanthropic slash giveaway content is fairly typical for Mr. Beast, um, and the surgeries were done in partnership with C International. Uh, Mr. Beast's rationale for it can be found in a tweet that was posted the same day. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do the criticisms first. So one, this is the monetization of people's suffering. The charity contributes resources to helping people, mean, meaning... Not all of the money that made this happen is from Mr. Beast, and the additional attention will lead to future profits from him. Okay. Number two is that people who 
can't afford surgery shouldn't have to wait for random acts of kindness from a wealthy celebrity to fix basic problems. And this applause and focus on individual charity distracts from the structural changes that need to happen. And number three criticism was, it's kind of cringe, yo. Uh, some viewers reported feeling deeply uncomfortable with the general dynamic of a rich dude making a video of person after person being desperately grateful to him. Um, now, let's go back to... So, th in this case, this is someone that I actually do know personally. It's not like we've uh, spent, you know, many, 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 you know, months together working side by side or, you know, in the fields, you know, harvesting wheat or whatever he's making videos about these days. I don't know. I could, I could see him doing, like, I... I spent I spent thirty days, you know, harvesting wheat in a field. Like, who knows? He could make it entertaining. Do you deny it? I probably could. Okay. So the point is, but this is an individual that I actually know. Um, and so, first of all, are the defenses. So I already said this, but this kind of philanthropic slash giveaway content is pretty on brand for him, pretty typical. And his rationale can be found in a tweet posted the same day. And this is what he said: I don't understand why curable blindness is a thing. Why don't governments step in and help? Even if you're thinking purely from a financial standpoint, it's hard to see how they don't ROI on taxes from people being able to work again. Um, that is one of the most... Uh, how do I put this? I like Jimmy a lot. He's, I think he's pretty transparent that his, you know, his main goal is to be the biggest YouTuber ever. I don't think he shies away from that. And I, I don't think he, I don't think he hides from the fact that, um, you know, a, a lot of what he does is in service of that goal. Right? No, not even hides. He, he promotes that. He has no issue. However, something that you guys have got to understand about him is that A... He's super, super young and has basically lived in a bubble creating YouTube comment, content for, like, his entire adult life. And two is that I think the YouTube content aside and wanting to be the biggest YouTuber and whatever else aside, I think he genuinely has a good heart. And what's really interesting to me is this tweet is either engineered to be as viral as possible which is, a, is an option. Um, you know, he certainly could do it. If there's anyone who I could look at and say, you know, yeah, that probably, those words in that order is probably whatever would perform the absolute best. Um, he, could, he could do that. I wouldn't, yeah, I, I believe it. Um, but I want to believe it's something else. I want to believe it's an awakening where he is figuring out that for him to actually make a difference in the world, he needs to promote societal change, structural change, rather than just making charity porn, um, which, is, which is what some people described the Curing Blindness video as. However, I think that he's going to encounter, well, he's already encountering, but I think that if he actually goes down this path of, hey, this is just kind of common sense from a, from, a, from a common good standpoint, we should all work together to cure this very curable illness so that this person can, can even just purely from a financial standpoint, uh, you know, contribute more to our nation's GDP, right? Like we should just all do this. I think that particularly in the nation where he lives, he's going to, he's, going to run into a lot of uh, pushback. Yeah, a lot of resistance. And it's baffling to me because I already live in a country where this surgery is just fine that you just get it. Um, and do you get it tomorrow? Not necessarily. Okay, it's a triage system. If something more urgent comes along, you will probably get bumped. And we often have shortages. Of and we often and have shortages staff. but that's a i mean that's a long conversation part of our shortages are because we have a significant brain drain down to the for-profit medical system down in the states where doctors can make way more money at predatory hospitals than they could up here so that's a whole 
that's a whole can of worms we're not going to bother trying to unpack today. <laughs> Our system's not perfect, but like, much like I think Jimmy is trying to get across here, shouldn't we all be trying? Um, the timing is really interesting. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, the U.S. House of Representatives uh, passed a motion, which is kind of meaningless. It's just posturing, but passed a motion denouncing socialism. I'm not convinced that most of the people who voted on it actually understand what it is, for starters. Because, um, like, basically, that's, that's like this tweet in a nutshell. It's like, hey, wouldn't it be better for the common good if we just, like, cured curable blindness so that like people could get back to work like doesn't that seem like a positive thing um i don't know man i jimmy for president i i i think that he should set his sights higher than being the biggest youtuber i think if there's anyone that has the charisma and has just Do enough of think... a no-nonsense common sense approach that he could actually disrupt it, this this broken system. He's you, too young. Do you have to like put like your legally. business on hold or anything? Well, apparently not. Yeah, I mean that was the norm. Yeah, we experienced that. That, that was yeah. That was he that. could just keep making YouTube videos. So, I doubt that would fly. I mean, from President my understanding, tries to get off White House grounds without the Secret Service stopping him. <laughs> <laughs> Actual real edition. <laughs> no joke. I would watch the sh of that. Yeah, I mean, it would be huge yeah. reviews. It would be yeah. massive reviews. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, look, I've got people talking in the chat, right? Like he would get he would get stopped by the swamp. The opposition would stop him. He'd get monster votes. That's the thing. That's the thing, is no matter... Free Beast Burger with every vote. No matter who you are, I think that, you know, whatever your political leanings are, you could probably use a dose of common sense, you know? I think that on both sides of the political spectrum, we could all use a little bit more common sense. And Jimmy's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. So I'm, I'm not perfect. saying... He'd fix everything. He'd be perfect, perfect president. Nothing like that. But I think overall, his heart's in the right place. And, uh, you know, my worthless endorsement as a Canadian, uh, <laughs> being what it is, I, uh, I, I support Jimmy for our president. That's it. That's it. That's all I have to say about that. Wow. How old do you have to be to be president? 45, I think. 35? Really? Yeah, so he's not even eligible for... But that's the thing. He's got 10 years. He's got 10 years for the dumpster fire to get more dumpster fiery, for they the polarization a... to exhaust everyone, and for him to come in and say, I have a better way. What about just positivity? What about just trying to help people? What about seeing problems and going, why isn't this fixed? How is this still a problem? That's the right attitude. And that's what has made him successful so far. So all he has to do is hold on to that for 11 more years, 21 more years, whatever it is. Apparently it's 35. There you go. Um, oh, he's not 14, so. Yeah, what, what, whatever, whatever, the works, whatever it works out to. He's just got to keep grounded, which is tough. I mean, he's going to be the first billionaire YouTuber. Mark my words. Yeah, but I don't think he's going anywhere. Like anywhere as in away. I mean, that's what he tells me, but I have told him on multiple occasions, everyone wears out. It's tiring. You haven't yet. You got you, real close. You know I've been close. Yeah. <laughs> but you also, like, can't stop. Yeah. And I feel like he has the same type of mentality. <sighs> yeah. We're a lot of, like, he's just way better than me. <laughs> Yeah. And I just have a tech obsession. I'm just I was going like, to say, he picked, like, YouTube as his thing in yeah. general. I didn't pick tech. Tech picked me. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't make the rules. I, I was lucky enough that tech, I, I kind of jumped onto it at a time when it was exploding into the mainstream. Like, the fact that m most people care about a phone at all. Like, I'm thinking about when I was a kid. People didn't care about, f what, phone? Are you kidding me? Like, the thing that you, like, dial like this with the rotary. Like, come on. 
right? So I just happened to be passionate about tech and tech happened to be at an inflection point where it completely took over our lives and I've ridden that wave. Yeah. I yep. couldn't play the game like he does. What I could play is how to sell a lot of uh, desk pads on LTTstore.com. Hey! Uh, hey! I don't know if you guys noticed this. Let me open one of these. I know a lot of you probably did, though. But we finally, finally, I'm not talking limited edition, you know, small run desk pads or anything like that, or, you know, special graphics or anything like that. We finally launched a new desk pad the same way we did the Northern Lights desk pad. I'm talking, I'm talking, look at all these sizes. That's right. Any size you want, the price is the same, $29.99 US, and this one's different. This is the Stealth Desk Pad. Yeah. That's right. We have received... Okay. I resisted this for a long time. Long time. But both internally and from outsiders, people have gone, look, love the quality of the desk pad. There's no denying it's a great desk pad. For real, though. We have 6,171 reviews, and our average is five stars. These are all real user reviews. This is at random. I absolutely love this desk pad. I love it. This is a review of how the courier I love, sucks. I love, yeah. Finest mouse pad money can buy. So satisfied. Wow. wow. I love that the, the body of the comment on that one is literally just wow. Well, it's a great, it's a great desk pad. <laughs> anyway, the point is, we've had a lot of people say, "Look, I'd love to have the desk pad, but I want it stealth." No graphics. So stealth. We don't even have a logo on it. I'm a little surprised there isn't just like a gray logo, but it would break it up. It would break it up. I we get wanted it. the stealthiest desk it. pad. It's like while everyone else wants to cram their brand down your throat, we have actually gone there in is no brand. completely the opposite direction. <laughs> even the even the box has like barely any. There's there's well, it, there's most, the side. There's most, the one side. Yeah, but most of it's oh, just black. <laughs> that's true. Sarah designed <laughs> there, there that is, box. There is line of sectors to be as stealthy as possible. That's <laughs> just black. We took our original water bottle design that had Linus tech tips down the side and we moved it to a little tiny LTT on the CMOS battery. That's how we roll. Yeah. So this is the stealthiest, stealthiest desk pad that you've ever seen. It looks like a generic no name, but it plays like a primo tier brand name mouse pad. White stealth desk pad win. Never. Never. Don't buy white mouse pads. Do not. Do don't. yourself and everyone who has to look at your setup a favor by not yeah. buying a white desk pad. Don't do it. Um, and since we're talking about LTT Store, now is a good time to talk about merch messages. You guys are probably seeing them come across the bottom here. Our producer Dan, there he is. Hi, producer Dan, is going through all of your messages. And the way to send a merch message is to go into LTTstore.com, pick up a desk pad or a water bottle or even just a gift card if you just want to send in a message to the show. And Dan might reply to you if you just have like a shout out like, hey, mom. Or whatever you can have it flash down here uh, and he'll select a small number of them not too many today dan let's get out of here at a reasonable time uh, so, no for real do do it the way you usually do it yes yeah, so it's 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 fine it's fine it's a chill. lot today uh okay well anyway um you can pick out a handful for us to uh for us to talk about at the end of the show maybe respond to maybe do you want to give us a few now and then we'll we'll do the rest of them at the end yeah sure absolutely um i got a couple curated ones here let me just keep scrolling um, okay, this is from Bo. Hi, Luke and Linus. Just curious to see mm. if you had any memorable arcade moments from back in the day. Arcade moments? Yeah, you ever been to an arcade? Not gonna yes. lie, I was poor. Um, and arcades were very expensive. Yep. I probably spent a grand total in my life, uh, or my childhood life, of maybe like 20, 30 bucks in the arcade total, ever, growing up. And that's, I'm, I'm like... I'm including like that couple of times that my dad took me to the bar and we stayed way too long when I was like quite young and somehow I don't I don't even know why I was in there but I was in there and you know those chocolates the the square ones that have like the the color on a triangle and they're gold wrapped and they have like they're purple and so. green yeah I anyway so. I I just I remember this one time really vividly I had a lot of those and I played pac-man a fair bit i'm including i'm including everything here maybe like 20 30 bucks that's it i suspect i'm pretty similar because of a pretty similar situation 
Uh, I know we went to Palladium once. I went to Palladium a grand total of one time in my life. Yeah, me too. One time. Yeah. And it was like kind of cool. But I, I remember even when I was a little kid just being like, you know, if you hung out here for a while, like... The money's going away so fast. Yeah. Like it was shocking how fast the money went away for I, me. I remember like being very young because I don't think Palladium was around for all that long. And I remember thinking back then like like the the speed at which this could be you know dumped into an entire video game that you could take home so that's the thing is we're a different generation from the the 80s kids yeah. who didn't have the same games yeah. on their home system we had home consoles that's right we had home consoles so for the price of going to the arcade for like an hour i could go to uh oh man it's gonna escape me what was my childhood video store called <sighs> Willow Video Games. For I know me, you know baby. yours. It's still there. And That's it still cheating. Exists. You drive past it probably on Let's a weekly go. basis. <laughs> what awesome. was mine called though? If you're visiting the area, check it out. They're very cool. Okay, if, retro games. if anyone knows, okay, what what was the video? What was the what was the rental store? Uh, I know I know the the girl who worked there. Her name was Michelle. I I know her name still, but I don't remember what it was called. Gone Hollywood Video. But it was on no no. It was on the corner. Uh, by where the Bosleys was, um, in one of the like crappy shopping shopping centers. No, it wasn't Blockbuster. No, it was a, it was a small it was a small independent one. If anyone remembers in Ladner, okay. Jumbo Video. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't Juniper? that. If anyone if anyone gets Juniper. it, I'll I'll definitely remember it. But it's there's no point guessing, guys. If you grew up in Ladner, then then you'll know. Ah um, oh, man, this is driving me crazy. I have no idea. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you wouldn't know. No. Nope. Someone's like, oh, "Online has had a crush." Hundred percent. Like seriously, I was only like seven or eight, but definitely. <laughs> um, all right, let's. Yeah, that's. This is clearly not going to happen. Nope. Nope. People are not going to get it. That's fine. Nope. That's fine. It doesn't matter. The point is, like, never mind buying a game. I He's could rent there it anymore. It's not a dock. So. I could rent it for like five bucks. Yeah. And yep. then I could play it for like two days. Yeah. I used to rent games. Yeah. hundred percent. Work random odd jobs and then rent games for sure. Yeah. I am certain I spent more money renting games than I did in arcade. For sure. For sure. This is driving me crazy. I cannot remember. You're not going to figure it out. I know. Let's, let's move on. I hate this. I'm so mad. If you think about it in like an hour when we're still somehow doing the show, you can bring it up then. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Ugh. Okay, fine. Hit me with another, another one. one. Yeah. Uh, I got one here from Tristan, longtime viewer, and wanted to say thanks for all the content over the years. Is there any obsolete piece of technology that you still use, or wish you had been continuing, uh, or wish you had, ha or wish had been continued as a product? And if so, why? I mean, I th I think, man, I was about to say CRTs, but I actually don't miss them at all. Now that OLEDs no, and really like, to move around. and especially the the kind of filtering that you can do now, uh, pff, on an OLED, I, I I just yeah, forget it. See you later, CRTs. Um, hmm. man, you know what? Fine, sure, Pebble, Pebble smartwatch. I wish that they hadn't been acquired. I wish that they were still doing their thing because they were the only just zero bull approach to building a smartwatch um they were affordable they just they were gone too soon gone too soon pebble bring back pebble i have i have uh something that you're gonna say is objectively wrong and i won't be able to strongly argue against you're wrong um physical storage medium for games oh my god Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> i miss physical storage i miss it I'm not gonna lie. There was there was a, a thing I was reading about where some company figured out how to put some insane amount of data storage on an optical disc, and they were like, "This is gonna be the future." And I was like, "Good." It's not happening. Good. It's never coming back. Good. It's never coming back. Everything is I gonna be it. as a service. You will own I nothing. I want it. You will own nothing. Ah! And you will be happy about <laughs> the it. The fact that he's right does not make me happy. Yeah. People keep saying Video Land. Video Land is in Tawasson, which is within the same like jurisdiction as Ladner. Like it's all technically part of Delta, but Tawasson is not Ladner. Um, Ladner is a is a different like geographical part of Delta. Sorry, they're still trying though. Hit me, Dan. 
Okay, this one's from Alexander. Hey there, last week you all talked about how nice bidets were in Asia. Mm. I think we Western audiences get a bit spoiled thinking we have all the latest in tech here. What does the non-Western world have a leg up on the US slash EU vis-a-vis tech? Oh man, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things. Like, there's all kinds of, like, Japan-exclusive phones and stuff. Just, like, cool form factors, cool designs, cool features. Um, I don't think it's to the same degree now that it was in the past, but, um, man, like, when broadband internet was happening, when high-definition video was first starting out, Japan was so far ahead of the rest oh, of the yeah. world yep. that it just blew my mind. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I am just hearing about the existence of high-definition video, and this has just been a thing for regular Japanese broadcasts for years and years now. Well, where's mine? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's a, when, you, when you travel a bit, stuff changes a lot more than I would have expected. Like when I when I first started traveling for work, the only difference I really expected was like, oh, we're going to run into language barrier stuff. But the world's so connected these days. Everyone shares everything. A lot of the processes for how things are going to work are just going to be Translate figured what out, I'm right? about to say to Chinese. Yeah, that, that'll be the only thing I have to do. And that's a fun activity. I actually genuinely really enjoy that. But there's a lot more funky stuff. Like I, if I remember correctly, again, in Japan, you carry around like a stamp that's unique to you. Or maybe you don't carry it around. But for like legal documents and stuff you use your like unique oh, stamp that's cool. thing i've never heard of that uh, that might be totally wrong i'm sorry if i butchered that um and a lot of other countries will have like some little random unique thing to them um and sometimes they make a lot of sense and sometimes they don't I yeah don't this is hilarious um iirftw says nhk japan's national broadcaster for tv broadcasts in 8k for some programs <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy okay One more? Sure, absolutely. Um, I've got one here from Andrew. GPUs used to have video capture built in. I had a GeForce 4 with S-Video in. With the hardware encoding GPUs have baked in these days, it seems like a no-brainer for them to include capture as well. Why do you think they don't include it? Uh, the reason is DRM. That's why. Uh, there's, there's, there was a whole thing... You know, if you want to go down a rabbit hole for how lobbying destroys tech innovation, um, go look up Cable Card. So there was a whole standard that existed and was built to do exactly what you're talking about uh, to allow content broadcasters to encrypt their signals so that they could actually, you know, protect their 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 copyrighted content, um, but also allow users to install a, a card in their computer that could be loaded with this decryption uh, this decryption module so that they could DVR on a computer instead of having to deal with a VHS player or uh, or a DVHS player we did a video about DVHS recently which was which was super cool um, and basically because of lobbying efforts the whole thing got shut down none of the cable companies wanted to support it because they would rather, lease you a box yeah. that you don't own rather yeah. than have you own your computer and, and capture your content there where it can be easily viewed again. Uh, so that's that's what happens. Um, yeah, it's, it sucks. Cable card looked very promising. Cable card was super cool. I was super into like media center PCs. Like yeah. We had one up until we couldn't anymore because there were no longer any unencrypted broadcasts at, uh, at like my parents' place. Yeah, it sucked. Yeah, the cable card was sweet. Not cool. That was a very fun era to be into PCs. Yeah, for sure. There's just so many options. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, my my first real GPU, like like gaming GPU, was an All in Wonder 9600 Pro. I paid extra for the All in Wonder so that I could like capture video. I didn't end up using it that much, but man, that remote was sick. <laughs> I got, this is totally aggressively off topic. I don't know why I just thought about this, but I, I was reminded fairly recently about a funny story of a tech goof back in, back in the day. Um, I was a, I was a young lad and I was going to a, a, a girl's house that I was interested in. And, uh, I wanted to bring along my, I don't remember which game it was, but I had a, a, a disc 
a CD for a Star Wars video game. And I liked one of the music tracks for the Star Wars video game. Mm -hmm. So I said I would bring it along. Because I just assumed, well, like, the music track is on the disc. So I can just put it in something that can play music and it'll just play, right? Like, that makes sense. Yeah. The file's on there. It'll just work. So we get there and I I put it in her, like, dad's home theater setup. It's a video game. (laughs) I see. (laughs) It doesn't play. And I'm like, oh, it should definitely work. The file's on there. I know what I'm talking about. And the dad's just like... Um... (laughs) Sorry. very politely like you're an idiot stop <laughs> like, okay yeah you you were dumb uh you you try you didn't impress that dad <laughs> no uh, that was funny though people are saying it's video land uh video land is apparently what's there now uh or recently but i don't think it was called that this this signage looks looks pretty new i i don't I, yeah i don't think that was it i think it used to be called something else you guys, oh, oh, it's jujitsu something now. Oh, that's interesting. Depending on, wow, whoever drove through, this is kind of cool. Whoever drove through recently, whichever Google Street View car went through, only did the main road. They, whoop, yeah, see that? Didn't do the parking lot. Whoa, interesting. Oh, hey, there you that's go. That's interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Someone um, said apparently some game disc could do that. That's interesting because... I wonder if young me was right and his setup wasn't compatible or something. I don't know. That is the right address, though. That is the right address. Willow Video, probably not. Willow no. Video did have multiple locations. Did they? Yeah, and oh, they weren't all in Willow. Oh, I don't know. I just don't remember. I mean, maybe it was Video Land. I don't know. All right, back to topics. Yes. Hit me. Um, I had to scroll way up. We've done some stuff today. Um, uh, oh, here's one. Microsoft launches new AI-enabled Bing and Teams. I didn't see the Teams one coming, actually. Microsoft launched a new chat GPT-enabled version of Bing today and then immediately took it down. Several users report finding the Bing interface suddenly changed earlier today with a message introducing visitors to the new Bing. Before it was taken down, users determined that the new Bing can apparently respond to questions in a conversational manner and cite its sources, though a disclaimer warns that mistakes and inaccuracies are possible. Wow, that's pretty cool. Which is the way to do it, honestly. Uh, Microsoft also apparently intentionally released a new paid tier for a chat GPT 3.5 3.5 enabled version of MS Teams. It includes automatic note taking and intelligent recap features, as well as safeguards like automatic watermarking and labeling of sensitive content. Meanwhile, Google has invested in an AI startup headed by former OpenAI researchers to the tune of $300 million. Will this increase competition in the search engine space? What will that competition look like? It'll absolutely increase competition in the search engine space. And I think that competition looks like uh, $300 million so far. Google is... Wow. Gotta be freaking out. Um, But I think uh, Microsoft is hopefully going to be wise enough to not Halo Infinite, their their new Bing search, and release it wildly before it's ready. Um, And yeah. I, I suspect that was a natural mistake. The Microsoft Teams thing is very intriguing Yeah, to I didn't me. see that part coming. Uh, I haven't checked it yet, but I'm wondering if it's on top of already having like a business plan for Teams. Like I wonder if you have to pay even more. Um, appara- I, I believe it can actually do even more than, than what we noted here as well. Um, I think it can help with like uh, setting up meetings and like I know I know it can track notes and stuff, but I I believe it helps with like coordination of meeting planning, like picking a time and stuff like that. I'm not certain. I just I skimmed an article earlier today. Um, That's super cool, but it'll be interesting. I don't know. It's interesting. AI creates 3D videos and oh, hold on. Apparently, it was Video Land. Um, I just really, really, really can't remember the name. Uh, it was run by someone named Michelle for 30 years. I was going to say, you were a little focused on somebody else, I think. What's that? <laughs> the teller? Uh, you're a little foc- more focused on her than the name of the No, story. no, that's the name I gave before. 
I know. That's my I, that's my point. You were more, more focused on the lady than the store itself. Oh, I should have no. I should have known the name of the store because like that was where even even when she, like she wasn't working the counter anymore. At least I, I I don't know. Maybe it was her. Maybe it was someone else named Michelle. I actually don't know because uh, clearly I don't even remember the name of it. But that was the place, and apparently it was called Video Land forever. So there you go. As early as 1990, it was called Video Land. Thank you, Haley Ox in the float plane chat. Uh, this is from the Delta Optimist in 1990. Hello? Hot rental. A must. USA Today. Uh, what is this? What is this? Yeah. Hot rental properties? Wait, this is places you could go to. So, wait, this was how. So, touch, Touchstone is promoting. Wow. The, the movie. And saying, here's all the places you can go rent it. Wow. What? What was Video Fantasies? That sounds like they probably sold a wide range of uh, potential videos for a wide range of ages. <laughs> they sure probably widely did. Okay, cool. <laughs> what were we talking about again? Uh, anything. We can go to any other topic. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this one's kind of boring. Ah, but we have a new game to play. And this comes courtesy of our oh, WAN Show writer. Uh, this one is, the game is apparently that I have to guess which Linus recording is actually me and which one was generated by an AI. Oh. You ready? Okay. Um, so, hold on a second. I don't know. Maybe, Do maybe, I guess yeah, as well? I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at the details of the topic, so, uh, Dan, do you know anything about this? I have the cheat sheet of what is oh. real and not. Okay, so so there's okay. nothing. So we can look at everything that's in the doc. Apparently, yes. Yeah, okay. if you just pull one up, um, I don't know if they have sound or not. I've never heard these or okay. seen them. But Un if you pull one up, I'll unmute your laptop, and then we can throw that out. Okay, I'm on February second, Reddit user Prod by SciTech posted a damning, never before heard recording of the WAN show, where we discussed our vocal support for big tech monopolies yep, yep, yep. and our disdain for the everyday consumer. Screw them. I guess I should bring up the original Reddit post here and unmute my laptop, which uh, is I have to do that. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, you don't have to go to the page. Let's. Okay, do... you ready, Luke? I think that's it. If you can make it so I can hear it too, that would be great. I think you should both be able to hear it. We'll double check. Okay. In the news this week, do we have Samsung. Sound? I can't hear anything. Okay. Samsung One moment. But 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 unmute uh, the thing. Uh, can I click it again? Yeah, try. In the news this week, we're supposed to be able Samsung. to hear that. Nothing for me. Samsung oh, it's here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ah, okay, let's try one more time. <laughs> All right, one more time. In the news this week, Samsung. Samsung has been caught abusing patent law in an attempt to cripple smaller competitors' ability to repair mobile devices. This all Warning, sounds fake. There's a hot take ahead. Viewer, be warned. Um, I don't think there's anything morally or legally wrong with what Samsung is doing here. It's Samsung's patent. <laughs> Let them enforce it. That shouldn't be a hot take. I think that Samsung is well within their right. Yeah. And if people want to complain, it sounds like go Wendell make your own made. technology. It's mm -hmm. not Samsung's fault that there's no competition in the market. There's like yeah. a clear it's accent. just capitalism. Figure it out. I want to see these big companies, these big manufacturers take on the smallest possible entities so they can form these huge monopolistic goliaths uh. that can strip the average American of every last penny. No, but I agree. This makes me so <laughs> mad because... For some reason, people just have the worst takes on this. I get so mad hearing this. It's literal garbage. I saw this tweet this week, and this actual moron said, and I quote, tech companies own way too much. They need to be regulated. Huh. When I read this, I almost, I almost deleted Twitter. I wanted to reply and tell this guy, uh, actually, no, they should own more. Yeah, yeah. Elon Musk <laughs> should probably own his own chunk of the U.S. government at this rate. It's not like they're doing a good job without him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if it's so, just because it's me. I suspect uh, other people might maybe hear it better. That didn't sound like us at all, in my opinion. Okay. There was some. There was some like breaths and non-word based reactions that my version had that I actually okay. think were quite good. They sounded like exact copies. Okay. Um, but it sounded like each of them had like a strong like Midwestern yeah. American accent. Okay. That was clearly not us. So the clip is fake. 
obviously. It's a joke conversation created using Eleven Labs voice synthesization AI. According to the original poster, it was trained using just 30 second samples of each voice. Oh. Now, considering that, it's pretty close. Uh, and it took about an hour to create. Similar AI voice synthesizers, like Microsoft's recently released Val-E, can apparently use samples as short as three seconds to create passable imitations. Our writer's note here is that while the text was clearly pre-written, the ums and stutters are apparently randomly generated, which is pretty cool. So was that completely fake, or were there bits and pieces of things we'd actually said in there? Do, 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 do you know Mr. Cheat Sheet? Uh, no, I think the Cheat Sheet is later for the guessing game oh, oh i thought that um, was it so there you are here no that one was fake uh and, and that's in the thing these are the oh. ones that you have to pick okay here we so go that was an example okay so i should play fear uh yeah let's okay make sure this is unmuted we can look at your face we don't have to see the laptop okay um i think this should work hopefully it's not going to be too loud okay that one was pretty quiet fear.mp3 play one of the best pieces of parenting advice I ever got was you gotta hit them while they're young. They fear you, but they don't remember why. All right. Okay, so wait, who is supposed to guess? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it sounded like you were like chewing on something or you had a mask on. Okay, I don't think we should be allowed to look at chat. I think we're gonna have oh, I, to. Okay. Yeah, I, think I, to, I think I instinctively did that, so I'm gonna have to hide my yeah, screen. I'm, I I, yeah, I'm, I'm putting away chat. I remember clearly saying that. So, yes, um, I actually have pretty excellent recall for things that I have said. Um, obviously, you know, not remembering the name of the video store that I rented things from when I was a child did not. Um, <laughs> probably give you guys a lot of confidence in my in my memory uh but things that i have written things that i have read things i've said and things i've heard i'm usually pretty good at at least going that rings a bell um that one for sure that wasn't even that long ago i know for a fact that i i said that but what i don't know is if these are real quotes that are simply either run through a synthesizer uh. or not i'm gonna say was synthesized. Am Luke, I also do you have a voting? Take? Uh, just for funsies, I'll say it, it wasn't, but he's like wearing a mask or something like that because it definitely sounded muffled. So you're both saying it wasn't? I'm Wait, saying what? it was synthesized, okay. but it was definitely because. A real or it's a Or it's like a poor quality recording, but I definitely said that. Yeah, I'm, I would also say that he definitely said that. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't know. Do I give them to you one by one? Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah one sure. by one. So that was real. Yes. That was that was not fake. Oh, so it just that it, was what that's what you sound like to everybody around you all the time. <laughs> was he? Do, do you know? Was he like wearing a mask or something? I have absolutely no idea. I just have a piece of paper. Sure. Yeah. There's a reveal here. Yeah. Oh. One of the best pieces of parenting advice I ever I got was, was, was you gotta hit them while they're young. Okay. <laughs> that way they fear you, but they don't remember why. Okay. Yeah. Hold on a second. This. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Uh, good, yeah, you caught the mask. Okay, all right. I'm still giving myself half a point for that because I knew there was something wrong with it, but you nailed the mask. That's Luke's ahead for sure. So oh. one zip, let's go. You ready for the next one? This one's called competitive. It's spelled wrong. I'm sure that's for a reason because the WAN writer doesn't actually <laughs> spell things wrong very often. <laughs> this device I would never buy is competitive with another device I would never buy. Wrong, fake news, generated, incorrect, false. This device I would never buy is competitive with another device I would never buy. This audio clip I would never vote for. Okay, I think fake. It's fake. Final answer, yes, it is fake. Yeah, okay. It is a quote from Linus, however. Okay, that's what was... See, that's what you was don't hear throwing the voice me off difference. a little bit. So here's the thing. I don't hear myself... And I don't watch my videos. So I don't actually listen to my own voice pretty much at all. Yeah, but that one has an accent. I mean, but I remember saying that, so it made me question it. Okay. Because I definitely yeah. said that. I think that probably helps because I don't 
watch your videos, man? Sapphire panels. Let's go. <laughs> Using a massive panel of pure sapphire for the front of a phone would be a little bit stupid. Fake. I'm just going to let Luke play the game. I give up. It's fake. You give up after two? It's fake. I give up after two. Luke's going to play the game. Hit us. You have to do it. No, tell me if it's fake. Oh, uh, yeah, that was fake. Okay, all right. Go back and watch. Hit us, you have to do it is amazing. <laughs> That's going to be in a future one of these. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, ready? Now go listen to the last 20 seconds or so of this video and think of penises this time. You're welcome. Real. That's definitely real. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I have said some really outlandish things. <laughs> We have some very good video editors. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, that I just said that. That was not edited. That's oh, boy. Like, I, that's the thing I said. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Because I was talking about um, uh, a full HD product of some sort, and I kept referring to its, like, describing its image quality and, and or, like, talking about it as, like, 1080p-ness. And then at the end of the video, I'm like, okay, now go back and pretend I said 1080p-ness. Every time. Uh, that was the context for that. Okay. Uh, Lazy.mp3. Sometimes the obvious product is the right one. Fake. Other times it's the lazy Fake. one. That's definitely a thing I said. That's a quote from a recent video, but uh, fake. I think Luke's right. It is fake. Okay. So, it's too easy. So we can. So we're basically what six. you're saying is we yeah. can do this pretty well. Daddy.mp3. They, they might get harder. Oh my. Daddy's going on a dangerous mission to shoot Fake. his employees. Uh, hold on. Daddy's going on a dangerous mission to shoot his employees. Okay, I, um, I don't remember yeah, ever unless, saying that. Unless you mixed your voice profile with Ben Shapiro, that's not you. I don't remember ever saying that, so I'm going to say fake. Uh, that was number seven? Yeah. Red screen? That was seven. You no, that played? was Daddy. Uh, apparently that is a quote from Linus. What? Uh, but it was yeah, fake. It's fake. I said that? I don't know what you said. Apparently. I when the hell did I say that? Daddy's going on a mission to shoot his employees? You probably had like some prop gun or something you're just messing around or, with. Or like shooting with a camera. Yeah, I don't remember that. Or that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Red I've screen. never had a computer red screen before. Fake. There you go. Very good. Okay, I think I'm getting better at this. Eight. Comments. Oh, no. You know, I should really be sitting on the can because that's usually Real. where I read comments. They all sound a little processed, though. They do a little bit. It, I think it's like potentially like not very great recordings, but that one's real. Okay. That one had some echo in it. And yes, you're right. It is real. Finally, sorry. Sorry for being late on the Wand Show this week, guys. Okay, well, that's fake. I would never call fake. it the Wand Show. show. And I don't think you'd really apologize Dan? for being late either. Luke, I need Luke's answer. It's fake. It's fake. Yes, it's, it's fake. fake. Yeah. Good job. 10 for 10, everybody except Linus on the first one. Okay, Got so him. here's the thing, though. Not that long ago, when we did that video where James uh, yeah. hosted it, yeah. and it was a deep fake, right? Um, I don't know that the voice model that we had that time was really much better than some of these. And here's the thing. That was only able to be created with my explicit consent. There was like a whole process. They took an enormous data set and like it took a long time to, to crunch it. Now this is being done with what? 30 seconds of audio? That's wild. And so I don't e like that like, you know, if, if, if this clip, like the original source that, that got us to kind of do this, right? Yeah. That Reddit thread. If, if one of those clipped... If one of those clips was put next to, uh, like, a, a, a title that claimed that you were saying those things and didn't say that it was AI, you might trick some people. Yeah. You might trick some people that are less familiar with the voice. And like, yeah, I, I'm assuming, I wasn't looking at chat, obviously, I'm assuming Floatplane Chat probably answered pretty accurately while we were going. Probably. Um, but that's also Floatplane subscribers, right? That's people that are watching the show live. Yeah, guys, it's not scary where they are right now. It's scary how fast they're improving. Oh, yeah. And how um, easy it is for you to just generate a voice model of someone without their consent. So, uh, 
I don't know. There's been there's been a lot of discussion lately about using AI to make people say or do things uh, without their consent. Yeah. And I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that, you know, while obviously that Reddit thread was clearly labeled and created in jest, in general, I think we, we all need to kind of figure out um, where the lines are here real fast and what's, what's cool and what's a joke and what's really super not and what's, what's harmful. And I think we are overall not doing a great job of it right now. Yes. There's it's significantly too much of this stuff. All I have to say about that. Yeah. Let's do a couple uh, merch messages and then there's a couple other ones here that I want to get to. Oh, no. Let's talk about Twitter cracking down on um, just being smart, I guess. Uh, <laughs> on Wednesday. Twitter announced that they will be charging for API access as of next week, eliminating the current free tier of API access that allows for up to 250 requests per month. One reason appears to be to eliminate bad bots, but popular entertainment and news aggregator bots will be similarly affected. So free services like at Nin Status Bot, which tracks Nintendo server outages, and at Earthquake Bot, which tracks global earthquakes over 5.0 on the Richter scale, probably can't afford to pay $149 a month to continue operation. The fees for API access are Quite a bit. ridiculous. Quite a like, bit. actually outlandish. Yeah. Um, another reason appears to be to force researchers to pay to access what the announcement called one of the world's most powerful data sets. It's also one of the world's muddiest, most garbage-ridden data sets. So it, it's definitely uh, one of those. Yeah, that's a whole that's a whole can of worms, I guess. I mean, if you're going to try to back out of the purchase based on how junk the data set is and full of bots, <laughs> it is, and then you're going to turn around and call it. But it is the extremely valuable. Most powerful data sets. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess the contradiction doesn't matter to some people, but uh, today. Elon Musk, um, CEO of Twitter, yeah, uh, tweeted from his personal account that Twitter will begin sharing profits with creators for the ads that appear below their tweets. I should ask about the ads that appear right before their tweets. <laughs> for those of you who are just tuning in now, we're referring to a controversy where YouTube is not paying uh, shorts creators for ads that show up before the user has watched a short, uh, but while they are in the shorts feed, which is um, okay. okay. Um, so long as they have a paid subscription to Twitter Blue. <laughs> yeah. So you actually have to pay. You got to pay to make money. To and be you don't know how much money you're going to make. Eligible for ad sharing. Um, okay, um, no. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, in res a response to a comment, Musk likewise announced that Twitter's legacy blue verified checks will sunset in a few months. Yeah, that went really well last time. That was really good. There were no problems with impersonation <laughs> last time. Yeah. Cool. So I don't know if he realizes this yet. Uh, maybe the, he made a video. I haven't watched it, but I have read some of the comments. Um, I don't know if he realizes this yet, but the problem last time was making check marks available to anyone who would pay. And so there was a ton of impersonation. And the problem this time will be a bunch of legitimate accounts not being verified, which opens the doors wide open to impersonation, right? Like, you get it, right? These are the same thing, just two different yeah, ways. We had, we had a problem before Musk bought Twitter where a ton of legitimate accounts that needed verification couldn't get it. And now we're going to have a problem where no accounts have verification. Nice. Cool. Um, the overwhelming majority of current legacy blue verified accounts are celebrities, journalists, government officials, and departments, and brands. So... People that could use verification. Yeah, this this is a problem. Well, then I guess they can afford to pay for it, Luke. Probably not always. But it's but the it's the too. it's the town square. <laughs> Everyone why should have an still, equal voice, just some more equal still than talk others. About Twitter news, man. I don't know. It's it's like how can you look away? It's just it's you a, got it. It's a dumpster there, fire. There's so many people that are like, it's so oh, hot. Musk is the bad man, and then promote him as much as they possibly can. I feel like we're doing the same I thing. I don't even know about bad. I think it's just like... Musk is the entertaining 
<laughs> Look, mom, clown. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Like it's it's it it is honestly comical. It it raises so many questions for me. How can someone who has managed to whether it's deserved or not, managed to get so much of the credit for the accomplishments of the companies that he has led, I guess, up until now, well, okay. make such terrible short-sighted to, decisions. To put on my wheel of whatever sure. it's called hat. Um, Go ahead, defend the should, indefensible. He should be able to make changes to the thing that he bought that was categorically a failure sure. in like every measure oh yeah way. i was losing money i it think they didn't they make money like one money. quarter ever or something like that i don't even know if they did that maybe they did i don't know i genuinely don't know if that's true or not what i do know is they were losing insane amounts of money just year over year just bleeding out like crazy so he has to find some way to try to make it make money and that's going to be really hard for twitter i'm pretty sure i've said on the land show a bunch of times in the past that i don't really understand how twitter would uh, make a lot of money. Uh, he scared all the advertisers away. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a good plan. So now he's got to find a different solution, and maybe those bot guys will pay for it or something. I don't know. Um, I think this is a bad move. I what I I do think that the statement, just just like a lot of the things that have happened with Twitter, I think the original statement is is correct to a lot of degrees. Like there probably is a lot of bots that are using the API that are bad. For sure. Probably true. Probably true. I don't think you necessarily fix it this way. No, I don't think this is the solution at all. Yeah. The solution to a bunch of the definitely real problems that have been pushed out are questionable. And some of them have been, been pushed out and then pulled back and like they've been acting very quickly. They've been quite agile in their way of doing things, which some people will say is good and some people will say is bad. Um, I just, my stance has been the same this whole time, which is, it was a dumpster fire before. Like, we can't forget how trash it was, which I think a lot of people do. Yeah. I think they look back at old Twitter with rose-tinted glasses. Yeah, it was crap. It was crap. It was and crap now then, it's, it's crap now. Crap in, like, seven different ways. Yeah, it's uh, it's burning crap. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. Uh, yes, they have had a profitable year. In 2019, Twitter was profitable. Cool. Uh, that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's. I think the the answer to. I think it would have been kind of neat if you could like apply to be like a bot of good faith, because there are honestly straight up, and I actually find it really annoying if I am actually using Twitter and I see this happen where you get like every single reply to a tweet is like at save thread or whatever. Mm. They just like, it's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tweets just calling bots in to like save threads or save videos or do whatever else. Oh, it's like I just really seen that. Build this functionality or like something. Like, uh, so there, there's, there's functionality solving bots. Right. That they're very likely going to block out. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Jaden's saying, why not bot verified? Yeah, exactly. So like, I feel like the old verification system where you like apply for it and then you get it or not might actually make sense for bots but then they didn't do that they just yeah you'd, you'd have to have people who work on something that doesn't generate revenue yeah which is clearly not the plan not happening. at what, twitter 2.0 which again, is hardcore <laughs> might make sense to certain degrees because they're sitting on this teetering edge going like are we going to completely bankrupt ourselves yeah so like would would you as a leader of a ship that is potentially a month or two away from bankruptcy want to commit anything to something that isn't going to make money pretty unlikely i don't know situations whack speaking of whack netflix will probably maybe definitely possibly kick you off of your mom's account <laughs> netflix has posted a set of new user guidelines netflix claims the post was an accident and the guidelines were intended only for a few countries in Latin America where it has been testing paid account sharing since last year. But, <laughs> I mean, by accident usually just means by accident early. You don't accidentally publish a page outlining new policy. Or, like, you don't actually accidentally create it in the first place. And if it was for countries in Latin America, like, um, does it make sense that it was in English? Am I am I overlooking something here? It feels very like Wizards of the Coasty. 
Yeah. Where they had that whole thing for Dungeons and Dragons and they're like, oh, I mean, it's not out yet. It's like, yeah, come on. Especially because the plan to crack down on password sharing is corroborated by a letter to Netflix shareholders stating that paid sharing would be rolled out more broadly in March. (laughs) The guidelines state that all devices will be required to log in to their home Wi-Fi network at least once every 31 days to ensure that the account is not being shared outside of the household, which raises all kinds of questions. Why are they tracking which Wi-Fi networks you're logging into? Is no, that your question? No, not even that. So my, my question, Mr. Teacher, is what about a lot of places in the world where they don't have Wi-Fi and they run off cellular signals at home? Well, that would still... Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what about that? That's like not uncommon. Yeah, it's I uncommon about where that. we're from. Yeah, but in like Taiwan and stuff. Super common. Yeah. 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 This is totally a thing. There's places around the world that have extremely good cellular and, infrastructure and cheap, and cheap, cheap data to the point where like why would you even get home internet? You have basically unlimited data and it's really cheap. Oh, balls. All right. Well, anyway, so um, like how the heck is that supposed to work? While traveling, Users may request a temporary code that will give them access to the account for seven consecutive days, but otherwise, logging into the account away from home may result in it being locked. Netflix estimates that at least 100 million households engage in password sharing. Based on the Latin American trials, they expect to see a wave of cancellations. Apparently, apparently uh, they're going to use location ID for mobile. Okay. Or location services for mobile, sorry. Followed by a rise in revenue as account borrowers open their accounts and users expand to paid tiers with more flexible sharing options. <sighs> I don't know, man. I feel like... I don't know how much Netflix costs in Latin America, but I feel like at the rates Netflix is trying to charge in the U.S. and Canada, they may not see the same result. Apparently they may have retracted this. People are sharing links right to us right now. Netflix has retracted password sharing restrictions. Well, yeah, but we're not saying they were... didn't. We, we we said that right away. Netflix claims the oh, post yeah. was an accident. Yeah, we know. what are you guys talking about? We're just telling you guys that there was the, the letter to shareholders saying that paid sharing would be rolled out more broadly they, come March. They've been threatening cracking down on password sharing for a super long time. Just because this leaked early doesn't mean they're not doing it. Yeah, I... So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. This is one of those things where the, I mean, it's not like the license agreement has changed. It was never intended to be shared outside of a household. It was intended to be like, uh, the way I understood it is it was kind of like the like cable subscriptions, like at your house, like just like when they were mailing DVDs. Yeah. It, it's not intended for you to take the DVD with you on vacation for a month. Actually, I think you could keep things as long as you wanted. You just had to send them back when you got the new Get ones? Get a new one. Okay, so then, fine. That is not a great <laughs> comparison. But my my understanding of it was that it was kind of like your cable TV. Like, it's like at your address. And obviously, you can invite friends over to watch it with you or whatever. And you can all use it there at your address. But it was like per family was my understanding. Um, and so this is basically them just enforcing something that was always the rules but the problem with it is almost that they let it go for so long that it's become normalcy yeah it's that, expected <clears throat> so now that they've now that they haven't been fighting this battle for so long like as long as a, well they promoted it too like i know people have memed on this a lot i'm not the first person to point this out but there's a tweet from forever ago from netflix um that says love is sharing a password like they they have engaged and promoted with this type that, of activity that muddies the waters a lot. Oh yeah, it sure does. A lot. Like it's weird. I don't know. Like I I can totally understand the idea of like wow, there's a lot of people freeloading off this service. Um, at least we make it so that only a certain amount of screens can be active at a time. That limits the amount of freeloading on the service. Yada yada yada. Um, it might even be a promotion vehicle. I, I've wondered about that in the past. Like if you're if you're leeching off of someone's Netflix, uh, but they keep kicking you off whenever they want to watch it, you might be like, well, okay, I should just get my own account. I guess I'll just get my own account at some point. Yeah, for sure. But now you're just going to pirate. Yeah. Or privateer. We are we are headed into, I think, the next the next big piracy age. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, people... It totally feels like it. People demonstrated that, no, they were not willing to pay for packages full of content that they don't care about. They they showed that they were really only interested in a la carte and a, a, a reasonable monthly subscription. And now we have subscriptions up the butt just being thrown at us from every direction. I mean, okay... You recently got a mattress with a subscription. Yeah, not a mattress, but yeah. Well, basically, I don't know. What? How would you describe it's it? It's like a cover thing. Right. So like... It's stupid. What? I hate it. <laughs> not not the thing. Are the you paying great. it? Uh, I think... I think it the, comes with a free trial. One, yeah, that thing. I think that thing. Are you going to pay for it? I don't think so. It might be good for some people. My... Problem is, I just put it on the lowest possible temperature. <laughs> That's great. Okay, he's he's got one of those cooled. I have a cooling thing. Mattresses. I am a warm boy. Um, he is a warm boy, and my my partner is a cold lady. lady. Um, and frigid. We'll we'll be in the so. I mean, I was I was all like, hey, and she was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, I I will be there with like a sheet just over my midsection, just sweating buckets yeah she's in the same room with me three blankets on shivering <laughs> and like i'm not exaggerating this has actually happened yeah so we needed something um and it was like way too much money but i was i've been having an extremely hard time sleeping for a long time because of that because i literally just sweat constantly yeah um and to be able to sleep properly your your temperature is supposed to drop a little bit and that just was never happening for me and all this kind of stuff yeah so yeah i i got one um and i put it on the minimum possible temperature and it doesn't solve the problem completely because i'm still a really warm boy yeah but it helps noticeably it like it actually helps quite noticeably so worth it i guess even though it was a lot and i am a cheap person raging azaru asks why are so many women cold all the time it's because physiologically they are different and they're colder I um I was reading Fat an interesting and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, I was reading an interesting article about um the that like the perceived warmth for for men and women in general and it was something like our room temperatures are are, are like multiple degrees. I think it's like 3 or 4 degrees different. off. Isn't it? Like it's it's enormous. Yeah. It's not a small amount. And in a in a in a in a generally um male run world the temperatures that we generally accept as comfortable and within reason um, are not actually comfortable for women. Now, I with didn't that, know this for a super long time. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah, I, I only came across this like a few months ago. And in general, I kind of still stand behind that you can put on a sweater, but I cannot strip down to hey, nothing. Why not? Because sometimes even like... Okay, for me and Yvonne, it's the same thing. She's a she's a chilly lady, um, and I'm not like you quite, but I'm a pretty warm running boy as well. And so I could be completely naked, and she could be wearing a sweater, and both of us would be at a at a similar level of comfort. Uncomfortable, but like opposite ends. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so it's it's one of those things where it's like it's a lot easier for you to put on a sweater and be comfortable than for me to be sweating buckets and be uh, uncomfortable for different reasons. And, and my, my, but, my, my girlfriend was a trooper, man. Like she tried, she would, yeah. she would go to sleep wearing like sweats and have two blankets and like all this other kind of stuff because she was trying to make it so that I wasn't suffering, but I was still suffering and I felt bad cause she's doing that and just, uh, just bleh. So the only time I get really upset, though, is this when... This isn't an ad, by the way. I just, like, bought it. It is is when a lady in your life complains about the smell when they won't turn down the heat. <laughs> so that cross-country trip I did with my mom, <laughs> the amount of complaining there was about how much I stank was like, what mother... Am I, what am I supposed to do What about on it? earth am I supposed I to do? I am literally sweating a bucket. I am... I. I, I am literally sweating through my clothes, and oh. you won't turn off the heater. For for people, that and every think... time I try to crack the window, you tell me to close it, and I'm like, "Well, <laughs> it's nothing I can do about that." For for people that think I'm exaggerating, I, I was losing four pounds of sweat a night. 
That's wild. <laughs> that sounds impossible. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure there might be some issues with my measurement. The way that I would do it um, is I would weigh myself immediately before bed, and then before going to the washroom, I would weigh myself immediately in the morning. I'm sure there's some issues there, some other things going on. Um, but it was I was dropping four pounds every night consistently every time. So I was like, something has to change. Something. I'm like begging for more fans or the AC to be on or something. But then I also know that my girlfriend is like suffering because she's freezing. And I'm like, that's also not okay. So like, yeah, I don't know. People, uh, people are asking, when is whole human water cooling coming? We already did that video. The water cooled gaming chair. It's awesome. It's basically the same concept as a cooled mattress. You would breathe out one pound? Yeah, see, like, I don't know. There's there's things going on that I don't understand. Just that's why I explained the method so my incorrectness could be figured out. I mean, but I don't even know what, what a pound doing. is. So how does that relate to a <laughs> kilogram? I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Being Canadian, we have to be well-versed in both metric and imperial measures. So it's 2.2 pounds to a kilo, which I have to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, crap. LTX 2023 ticket site walkthrough. We need to do this. Um, I have to log into the store. Yeah, don't do that while sharing your screen. Uh, okay. Uh, bleh, okay, what do I do? Uh, just do it before sharing your screen well, and, and then show the site. Thanks, smart guy. You got it. Why are you going to be like that? I believe in you. You asked what you have to do. <laughs> why, why, are you, why are you like this? Uh, okay, do you want to do a thing real quick while I do this then? Um, sure. Cool. I don't think it's going to take you very long, but... It could. I mean, I managed to completely screw up everything last week. I can be pretty dumb sometimes. Um... You underestimate my abilities. Okay, no, I'm ready. Dennis requests that you talk about oh. the video premiering tomorrow where he replaces Linus's assistant. Source, Dennis. So It's already on Flowplane, by one, the way. One thing I'd like to clarify is that we, uh, we have a shared executive assistant, but yes, they, they're, they're mostly to help me. Um, I still like kind of have no idea how to effectively use an assistant Linus giving um, the reins over on anything is like a very big challenge why are you gonna be like that um why why just, are you gonna be just like being that? honest man well it's just it's one of those things where like okay I don't blame you i'm just it's just a thing we're in the middle of a shoot right let's say we're in the middle of a shoot and we need a cable so what i should get my assistant to go get it why don't i just go get it it's not like i can shoot until i have the cable what difference does it make is there anything else you do in the meantime I don't know. Could you answer an email? Maybe. Probably. May unless I don't. Unless I just don't <laughs> want to anyway, and I could use the break. <laughs> like, I well, don't... if you could use the break, then that has value too. I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's tough. I it's tough. Anyway, the point is that... Here, I'll just bring it up on um, float plane here. Oh, hey, there's an exclusive of Dennis, uh, Dennis's makeover here transforming into Vance. So here's the video. Uh, Dennis replaced our executive assistant for a day. Um, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but that <laughs> happened. <laughs> uh, yep. Charming. So you guys can check that out on float plane. Obviously we've got lots of other, <laughs> lots of other behind the scenes and exclusives and stuff like that. Anything with the little gold float plane here. Uh, here's how Tynan saw a monitor in half for the intro of a video. Uh, that's been really well received. Here's a what's in your PC going around and asking everyone in the office what they're running. Uh, we're trying to do lots of really cool exclusive content. This is worth watching. Uh, meet the team with Kyle. He kind of talks through a lot of the development that we've gone through for the screwdriver and stuff like that. It's about half an hour long. If you're ever looking for extras, that's, cool. that's a good place to get them. And if you're ever looking for tickets for LTX, let's go. That transition. The though. purpose of showing this to you guys right now is so that when tickets go live at 9 a.m. on Monday, okay? So that's in Saturday, Sunday, it's three days, 9 a.m. Pacific time. You won't have to kind of 
freak out and go like, oh, I'm the, uh, uh, okay, do, where, where do I get the, this and where do I get that? And, uh, oh, I, I missed something that I wanted because I was in a hurry to check out. So I'm trying to show you guys what everything is going to look like. For tickets for, the, for LTX, you can get Saturday Expo, Sunday Expo. Those are one day. You can get two-day Expo tickets, so you can come both days. You can get BYOC plus two-day expo. We have no way to attend the Whale Land BYOC uh, gaming event without buying a two-day expo pass. And the reason for that is that we have no way of keeping BYOC people separate. Um, there's the Dolphin VIP package, which is essentially LTX Expo VIP. So two-day Dolphin badge that provides expo access. Um, Reserved main stage seating. You can skip some lines with an express line punch card, VIP meet and greet session. Um, and you'll have a Dolphin VIP merch pack. No, no, that's, oh, yeah. Yes, right? Yes, Dolphin VIP merch pack. Yes. Okay, then there's the Orca VIP package. This is essentially um, a Whale Land VIP spot. Um, so you get two day Orca badge. Uh, 48 inch by 30 inch VIP BYOC table section, reserved front row main stage seating, skip some lines with express line punch card, and you get a Whale Land merch pack. Ba -ba 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 -ba. There it is. Sweet. There's going to be some new desk pads. Uh, you will pick one of your choice. So we'll have to figure that out, I guess, when you're checking out. Okay. And then finally, there's the Whale VIP package. Yes, that is not a typo. It is 10,000 US dollars. You want to know what's even crazier? We already sold two. <laughs> we told the we told the whale attendees at Whale Land one that we would give them first crack at uh, whale tickets for LTX. Does this one include a computer? Yep, they got a computer from. I the know last two one. of them. Two of them <laughs> are back at the whale tier. Okay. <laughs> I mean that's the whole point, right? Yeah. I mean if you're gonna whale. You don't just wail once. <laughs> All right. A, a, a harpoon me a good one. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, is it bad that we own this whole thing so hard? The whale, the whaleness? I, I can't tell. I don't I'm know. I'm not sure. Anyway, it includes a unique whale badge. Um, Take it all with the whale seating section for the main stage. Skip some lines with express cut, blah, blah, etc. You get to hang out with the LTT staff during the whale VIP meet and greet session. Uh, LTT office and labs tour plus transportation and lunch. A serious haul of merch with the whale VIP merch pack. A uh, luxury hotel room Friday to Sunday. Concierge service. That's spelled wrong. Dang it, guys. Uh, to provide you with food, beverages, and more during the expo. And a $5,000 PC. Um... You get to, so you will use and keep the PC after the LAN. You'll get a gaming chair and peripherals to use during the LAN, food and beverage station. And you get a plus one badge that includes two day access to the expo, chilling with the whales in the whale land zone, uh, sitting with the whales in the main stage, and joining in the meet and greet and office and lab tour. Now, if you do, are not interested in the whale VIP package, which understandably you might not be because it's $10,000, uh, there's also add ons for the LTX 2023 merch pack, which Yes, tie dye. Whoa! Boom. It's actually kind of sick. Sticker looks, passport, nebulous of enamel pin. Um, okay, as with any tie dye, by the way, guys, remember, 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 uh, it'll look a little different from one to the next. Okay, there's also uh, office tour, so you can get an office tour. You can get a labs tour, and then there's the whale land merch pack, which is only available for whale land attendees. So you'll have to make sure that you have. Uh, some kind of, yes, BYOC whale land in your cart, and then you can get the whale land merch pack. Now, I'm a little confused. Where did our, uh, I thought there were hoodies. Um, um, uh, okay, well, we'll have to figure that out. Anyway, this is what the site's going to look like. Is that in the merch pack? There's oh, that'd be pretty cheap. There's a film somewhere. release here, by the way, blah, blah, while you're attending, etc. No different than any other expo. We're a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, believe it or not. <laughs> And uh, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty much it for now. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you guys what it's going to look like so that it's not confusing at the time. Mm -hmm. 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday, yep, February 6th. You will need to create a customer account in order to start the checkout process in the store. Uh, you can make the account now to be ready. So that's uh, tickets.ltxexpo.com, I guess. Or I, I guess it should be linked down below at some point. Dan, thanks. Uh, ticket prices are USD only. Items cannot be held. They go to whoever completes payment processing the fastest. 
Uh, if you're looking for specific questions to or answers to your questions, the FAQ has been seriously updated. So there's a lot of uh, good information in there. Cool. All right. Should we do some merch messages? Yeah. Wait, were there any big topics that we didn't get to yet? I don't think so. Oh, I mean, AMD and NVIDIA have been undershipping chips oh. to keep prices higher. So chips. that's cool. I'm Rem so surprised Rem they would do this. Remember how many times we've said that AMD is not your friend any more than NVIDIA or Intel are? And like whatever their image is of being like super cool and your bro is is complete nonsense. I, I, I won't say it because I want people to watch the video. But for the AMD challenge that we're currently doing, my GPU is installed in a way that I have never even thought about installing a GPU before. <laughs> Good work. And it came to me after like a lot of contemplation, but it, it works technically. So um, AMD has been shipping below production capacity for at least half a year to maintain prices despite lower demand. They'd plan to do the same, though less so, for the first quarter of this year. Uh, NVIDIA told its own investors that they were under shipping back in November. They then released the RTX 4080 and 4070 Ti at an inflated price point while the market for GPUs was tanking. Lol, got them. Buttholes. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, Intel Arc gets better drivers and a price drop. Let's go. Yeah, this is pretty cool. The A750 got a price drop. It's now down to, I believe, $250. Whoa. Which is like, Yeah what a solid mid-tier GPU should cost. Yeah. Let's go. Nice. Uh, they also got a big bump in performance. So is there a way for me to... Oh, yes, here we go. I'll just kind of share my These driver screen. update performance boosts for Intel have been nuts. Yep. So this is compared to original. This oh. is not just one driver update. This is compared oh. to original. But there are some very substantial performance improvements here, and I love to see it. Going from 161 to 167 FPS, I don't know that I would have included that on the graphics. Same with 203 to 209. But hey, there's some much bigger improvements in games like StarCraft II, uh, Stellaris, CSGO, League of Legends. Other more different... Is League of Legends on here twice? <laughs> uh... Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, different resolutions? That makes sense. Cool. Yep. All right. Dan. Uh-oh. Hit me with some merch messages. Oh, I got a lot to hit you with. Uh, you probably want to go through some of the potentials. Okay, this one's from Yoshi. I think I've heard of, heard of you before. Hi, Linus and Luke. I am a dental technician. A profession making teeth. Cool story, bro. CAD slash CAM production has been slowly but surely taking over what used to be custom craftsmanship field. Are oh. there, is there a profession where uh, you didn't expect tech would take over? I didn't expect AI was going to come for creative this quickly. Yeah. And I don't think most people did. Because the advice for a long time in the past was like, oh, you want like an AI resistant job? try to get into creative yeah and then this year's all been like ai music ai art ai writing well the predictions have been just kind of all over the place like i i remember talking to you about this but it was pretty obvious to anyone with a, a pretty good understanding of the processing power at the time that back when tesla claimed that every car they were shipping today would be capable of full self-driving with software updates it was pretty clear that nothing existed that was going to be close like it's obviously not going to happen uh but there was still a lot of anxiety i think at the time about getting into say driving as a profession because the, the robots are coming for those jobs but that is obviously so far out now like it's it's just it's i think it's clear to everyone that the promises were nonsense and uh, whether it's just general operation or whether it's going to be those little edge cases that they're that they're hunting down, it's going to take many more years and a lot more hardware iterations before we actually get there. Um, but then, yeah, on the flip side, I didn't think we were going to see a, a chat bot that could interact so naturally. I wouldn't have even tried to guess. I, would have, I don't know. It, Far off. For, yeah, ages, ages from now. I mean, Google can barely call the correct contact in my phone when I use my voice assistant like they're useless if anything we're regressing like i just i thought we were so far away and then boom here it is wow yeah so it's a kind of a non-answer but i i don't know 
is there one you didn't expect tech would take over for me? As as generally a, a, like a technophile, I, I kind of, uh, you know, I'm like rooting for tech. I'm like, yeah, things, things should be easier. Um, uh, man, I'm sorry, I can't really think of anything. Uh, you know what? I didn't think I didn't think tech would be able to take over for like cashiers, and really f as, as quickly. I didn't think it would happen so fast. I was pretty I was pretty impressed by the Amazon Go store back when I checked it out. Uh, that's yeah, that's a little more advanced than most. Yeah, but but it is it exists. Yeah, it exists and it Absolutely. works and it's now. That one I did not expect to yeah. exist. I think yeah. the like self checkout stuff though is not surprising to me. Yeah. Okay, I got one here from Quinton. Linus, I've been interested in your videos regarding your personal monitor at home. Do you prefer the 42-inch or the 48-inch OLED monitors? I'm interested in buying an Asus ROG Swift 47-inch. Uh, not sure where to go with the 42 or the 48. Did you just call it ROG? Yeah. Whatever Man. I can do to offend as many people as possible. The Asus trademark Republic of Gamers uh, copyright. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I, def I definitely prefer 42. There is no question for me. Now, I mean, you can go back and forth on whether you want like a matte screen or a glossy screen or it's important to have a higher refresh rate or this is enough or like all the other specs completely aside, uh, 48 is too big. I've switched to 42 both at work and at home and I'm not going to go back to 48 inches. It's just a little bit too big. Okay, next one here is from Austin. What is your most memorable interview, either as the interviewer or the interviewee? I've talked about this before, but I think bringing Chris Perillo and Tom Merritt on the WAN show had to be by far uh, the most eye-opening. They weren't really interviews. They were more like having people on as guests. Um, but they were, they were super cool. I'm probably forgetting about some actual interviews I've done. I don't do a ton of them. We have we've never done a ton. We've never been a huge fan of them. Yeah. The the, the Chris Perillo Wan show for me in particular was a bit eye opening in regards to like how long the road ahead was. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, um, man, we're not that good. Yeah, I was like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> there's there's quite a ways to go. Uh, for me though, it'd be Palmer Lucky at PAX East in the like prime of Oculus. I was we just could not get anyone from oculus to respond to us at all if you remember that i do that was super super frustrating and then i got to like physically get in his face at the show and he was like oh hey i've seen your like reviews of our hardware and i was like that's cool why won't anyone respond to me and he was very surprised by that and he ended up getting like forcing someone to respond to me which was nice but like Hilarious. that was actually a pretty cool interview and luckily it got us an oculus contact um but temporarily until temporarily. oculus didn't exist anymore until they got exploded probably most of my best interviews have been or, or have were not interviews like like really really smart people i got to talk to like yeah. when i went down and did that uh collab with smarter every day and i forget his last name telly or something like that but luke the guy who worked on different luke not you oh. uh who worked on the um um the saturn five i was like yeah. like just just super smart the guy just like knew so much yeah. and um you know, I didn't. I didn't really, you know, make a, an interview video because I I prefer to keep our own voice and our own energy on the channel. But I've definitely had the pleasure of talking to some incredibly smart people. I mean, I can tell you guys now that like the Intel factory tour, Micron factory tour, stuff like that. I got to talk to people and hear things that will never see the light of day, but were awesome. And I'm sorry that they can't be an interview, but they they just aren't. Some of the like OVH engineers and shadow virtualization techs that I was able to talk to and was like super not able to include what they were talking about in the video was pretty sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah. There's some smart people out there creating the stuff that we use every day. Don't take it for granted. Yeah. Okay, I've got one here from Nicole. Hey, Linus and Luke. Linus, uh, you had mentioned before that back in the day you used to buy the latest GPU and then flip it before the next card would come out. Was there ever a card that you ever regretted selling and or buying? No, because remember back then in the mid 2000s, like 
2010s, early 2010s, it just got so much better all the time that there was just, there was, if there was one that I could regret even a little, it would have been the 8800 GTS SLI setup I had. Because when the 8800 GT came out, not that much longer, it was so cheap and so fast. Like it, it was priced like a GTS, but performed like a GTX, uh, especially with a little bit of overclocking and water cooling and that kind of stuff that I was into back in the day. Um, that it kind of made me feel like, oh, this might not have been that great of a choice. But I mean, I don't know. I, I it was just part of the fun of it almost that you got to, you, yeah, you got to enjoy it while you had it, and as long as you moved fast before everyone figured out the new hotness then it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Hello, wife. One moment. Can I help you? Um, it depends how many of these potential merch messages make their way into curated merch messages. I'm so sorry. You're more than welcome to just join us on the show, but I don't know if we have a microphone for you. Uh, no, okay. Or you can just go. Do we have two cars today? Oh, so that one's not out of the shop? No. Oh, because Luke can't drive me today. That's okay. I'll Uber home. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. See you later. Sorry. Way to go, Luke. All my fault. Basically. Yep. Okay. Uh, this one's from Patrick. Linus, a few WAN shows ago, you mentioned you would rather learn a musical instrument as opposed to a programming language. Which musical instrument would you learn and why? I'm totally unimaginative, so I would just go for the violin. It's a, it's pretty bold. Uh, this one's from Jetman. Go four, straight two, three, for six. violin. It's hardest. Hard mode. Hard mode. <laughs> Hard mode. <laughs> Insane. I just like how it sounds. It's good. Uh, Jetman, finally picking up one of the items I've wanted for a long time, including the screwdriver and workshop jacket. I'm about to start coaching my old high school's gymnastic team. I was wondering what sports have you done, and what's been your biggest takeaways? <laughs> I'll let Luke go, and I will rest for a while. <laughs> uh, what sports have I done? Uh, that's a genuinely a tough question because I sometimes forget some of them. Um, I've done a lot of stuff, though. Um, what was the end of the? What was? What are my takeaways yeah, from playing what, sports? Yeah, exactly. Um, holy, that's an extensive potential question. Uh, one one of the biggest ones for me is that I found a lot of value from playing sports uh, in in how it how you learn how to deal with people and work as a, a team and and be a unit um, and and how you learn and I don't think people that don't play sports necessarily actually get this lesson uh, how you learn that it like kind of sucks to suck um, and not just because you lose but because you might drag your team down. And why that putting in effort outside of like <laughs> Rod, Luke hit the crap out of me playing bubble soccer. Sorry, yeah, I do remember that actually. Um, <laughs> sometimes I just, I yeah, there's certain things. My brother and I are the same way. There's certain things that'll just make us see red suddenly. Uh, we both played a lot of football. If you cross your feet, things are going down because <laughs> people don't have very good balance and they cross your feet. So it's mm -hmm. the perfect time to hit them. Anyways. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, it teaches you a lot about being on a team um, and how to be a valuable member of being on a team. Um, and that, I think, is the most valuable type of knowledge that I pulled from playing sports, I think. Is that like being bad doesn't just suck for you. <laughs> um, and you need to try to improve if you can. Um, and if you can't, try to find a different way to utilize yourself on said team or, or whatever it is. Um, I was never successful in a team sport, believe it or not. I'm not a particularly gifted athlete and I'm not big, which is a lot of Western sports. Not great. Benefit like being big. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, other than maybe you're jockeying good at badminton. I'm pretty good at badminton. Yep. Um, and I was like pretty good at, you know, whatever, like essentially like kind of Taekwondo is what I did when I was in high what school. What sports did you try? Um, I mean, I played on a baseball team when I was like a kid, kid. I, I don't see baseball being your sport. Uh, um, no, it really wasn't. I, I could not focus. There, there's a lot of standing around in baseball. 
<laughs> that's yeah. yeah that would not, not gonna work. work i sucked at soccer terrible terrible that's actually surprising yeah no i was that was no good interesting yeah uh, I didn't play for long though, so maybe a part of it was that I was playing with kids that had been playing for a few years already. You might have also gotten a little bit distracted depending on your position. Yeah, I, d I didn't last yeah. um, in soccer. Uh, oh man, I was. I on could see you being a very good hooker in rugby. I was on swim team, and let me know. They tried to recruit me for the rugby. Did team, you ever try? Actually, it? I didn't like it. It's cold and wet. Like no. That's going to be an issue for a lot of Western sports. <laughs> You're just like out in fields. <laughs> yeah, no, like in, in grade nine or something. Like I, I actually. So I bet you would have actually been quite good at that. I had my opportunity to be one of the cool kids when like one of the like cool guys who was huge and was like on the rugby team and popular because we had to do a rugby unit in, in gym was like, oh, yeah, you'd actually be really good at this. Yeah. And I was like, dude, it's raining. <laughs> Oh, come on. It's man. like October. Like what's wrong with you? I'm going inside as oh, soon as I possibly God. can. I was on swim team. Uh terrible. Yeah, terrible. You're not really built for that either. No, not really built for swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Individual sports for me. Where I can't let anybody down but myself. <laughs> uh what was the team again? It was a volleyball team, I think they said. What what team were they coaching? The question? I don't remember. I don't have it on my screen. Gymnastics, that's right. Gymnastics. Oh, yep. so I'm not going to be able to help you at all. Yep. Sorry, I got nothing for you. <laughs> all right. I got a fun one here from Ryan. If you were forced to rename the WAN show, what would you call it? Oh, no. Um, Land show. Land show. We got the WAN show earlier. Luke, Luke and Linus bullshit <laughs> hour. <laughs> and then we'd have an asterisk, actually three hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, that's what it is now. Uh, yeah, we're just about over... Car carpool critics. <laughs> oh, you're going to make <laughs> fucking troll. You're going to make some enemies there. <laughs> let's go. Okay. The wand show is a pretty good suggestion. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's get this one from Mary. Uh, hi, I just used my single shoelace in a costume. It turned out great winning an award. Thanks for your consistent great quality. Luke and Linus, is there anything you have or would like to cosplay? I don't have the patience oh, to yeah. no, not build like a good cosplay. Like I just, man, like the dedication. And like I don't like doing anything crappy, I guess. Like if I'm, I don't do much. I do <laughs> raising kids. I do YouTube. I do badminton. You do a lot. What you do doesn't vary a lot. Sure. Yeah, I do a lot of those things. I go deep. I don't go yeah. wide. Yeah. And so I guess, you know, if I were to cosplay, I would have to basically drop one of those other aspects of my life. It takes a lot of time. None There's of which are happening. skill involved. Yeah. And time. That. Yeah. Even with, with all the skill in the world, it still, still takes, takes time. And yeah. I, don't, I don't have it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I, if, like, if I had to pick something, though. Like... Oh man, I have no clue. Yeah, I, I don't even, I don't even know. A lot like, of stuff that I would think about is just so generic that it like hurts. Yeah, like, I don't know, Locke from Final Fantasy VI. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that would basically be just putting on a bandana, though. So I guess I could probably pull it off. <laughs> Why there don't you, you cosplay as each other? You're both well known enough. I think we already Did we do. Ever do that. Do you do that? I think we do all the time. Well, yeah, we don't look that different. I mean, do we? Yeah, we the do hair our hair in different directions. Yeah, yeah. You're mirrors. Okay, so hold on. I, I should just mirror the, the Wayne Show set. Cosplay. Cosplay. Hey. There wow. Uh, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Yeah. This one's from Alex. Hey, Linus, question. What yeah. do you think about Microsoft's inability to compete against Apple on the laptop slash mini PCs on efficiency and power? They are the only other company that compete vertically with OS, custom ARM chips, etc., but hasn't. I mean, they've tried. The problem is that what's good about the Windows ecosystem is backwards compatibility. And Apple, I think, really surprised everyone when Rosetta 2 it was good, uh, when it was actually usable. Um, being able to to run x86 legacy programs on their ARM processors was was mind-blowing um i'm sure there's a team at microsoft hard at work on that right now 
or maybe not. I don't know. Like, how much of their revenue is even Windows anymore? I mean, if they manage to outcompete Google and search, maybe they just won't care. Um, that was a rambly response, but that's kind of everything I have to say about it. Okay, this one here is from Joshua. As a swimmer, I hear there are lots of fish in the sea, but all I see are many sea anemones. As a partnered individuals, any dating advice for us computer nerds that don't live in mom's basement? He's past the online dating era. Yeah, like I haven't been in the game in like 19 years. I don't, I actually, like to me, online dating and like obviously I'm 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 aware that it's like chill or whatever and totally socially normal now. Seems weird though. But when I was last dating, it was weird. Like I would I would have no idea where to even start with modern dating. Not even a clue. I hate oh, I know apps. what not to do. Uh I know definitely not to use my influence to groom people, like minors. I, I've learned from my fellow YouTubers and Twitch streamers that that is actually not okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't know what to do. I was never good at it. I uh, th- th- I hated the online apps, but the very short period of time that I was looking for dates using online apps, um, like a lot of other people were kind of feeling uneasy about it too because it was kind of the very beginning Mm. so i just didn't use them um i would like go to chapters which i don't think exists anymore indigo a bookstore sure there we go um and just like peruse interesting sections and just try to like see if i could spark up a interesting conversation uh one time i was on a bus and this lady sat next to me so i texted my friend about how i was like wondering if I should ask them out, but did it in a way that they could see my phone. <laughs> that, that worked is actually. Very awkward though. It worked. I mean, I'm not denying that it could be successful. I'm just saying like <laughs> nailed it. Tried it one time, hundred percent success rate. Okay. Guaranteed to function. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't drink. So yeah. back then the thing was just like go to bars. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I don't want to go to clubs or bars because I don't drink, and those places are not as great. Hey, mocktails are apparently cool now. Um, that f- I mean, so you can so you spend can spend way too much money. on a drink to yeah. not even get buzzed. Yeah. And think that it's okay. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so I don't know. I it's, a lot of my stuff was was just winging it because the Oof. only advice I'd get from anyone was go to bars, go to clubs, or use online dating. I was like, well, I don't drink, so the first two are out. And online dating seems super weird, so the third one's kind of out. And I never met a girl anywhere other than Christian summer camp and school. (laughs) You're asking the wrong people. (laughs) My my takeaway is there's Uh. no hope for you. (laughs) Okay, Joseph. Yeah, we both better hang on to what we've got. Yeah, because we'd be screwed. (laughs) Neither of us have any idea what we're supposed to do. Lost poor guys, uh, Joseph. Even given if, the sorry, sorry, <laughs> okay, we, no, go for it. If we lost the, the, the there was the fish in the sea analogy, right? If we yeah. if we were yeah. dumped, we'd be like the the like random turtle that's like swimming with the fish or whatever. Yeah. Like, so, oh, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Siri, hello Siri. Uh, sir, that's an Android. This Chat is a GPT, Wendy's. How do I do the dating? <laughs> Please help. <laughs> Sorry, you can go. Yeah. Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> People come here for this. Um, okay, this one's from Joseph. Uh, even given the experience and professionalism of everyone at LMG, accidents happen. What are some of the more serious things that have happened while on the job over the years? I don't know. There was that time I leaked the entire payroll of the company on Wednesday. <laughs> <show. laughs> was that time a few hours ago when you leaked the Facebook streaming key. What? Um, oh, that oh, was that was, today? That was broken anyway. Your, yeah. your email to Nick Light about new product ideas. Oh. Uh, you had emailed me the streaming key. Yeah, we saw There it is. It. It's right at the top there. Oh, it's not the whole... Oh, it's the whole thing. Well, it's also it's, wrong. It's wrong. That one didn't yeah. work. So. Yeah. Oh, cool. But we updated it anyways. That's what I was doing on my phone when you guys were talking. I was wondering talking. about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, good don't. job. 
<laughs> no, I, accidents happen. Serious things that have happened. There was the time that Colton copyright striked our own channel twice. <laughs> In fairly rapid succession, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. that's pretty good. I mean, you you pretty much name it. Something's gone. It's yeah. gone wrong at some point or another. Yeah. I mean, I we uploaded man back in the day. Like we uploaded entire videos with like missing audio and stuff. Like <laughs> the uh, there's one that's it's still live. My video on Nvidia's 3D Vision glasses is just like missing audio for most of it. And I just I, th- I forget what I did. Did I like, caption it or something? I don't even remember. I I was just like, well, I can't re-record it. So it's the box is open now. Yeah. Um, apparently, there was that time that you leaked the fixed shaft screwdrivers. Uh, well, yeah, but that I meant I meant to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, here we go. Nvidia GeForce 3D Vision glasses unboxing. The intro. Let's go. Bow, 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 oh, voice crack and everything. Bow, 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 I'm ready for dating. Oh, do you guys want to hear this? No. Nope. Okay. I mean, sure. Okay. This is epic. When is this from? Did I film this? A voiceover. We're uh, no, we're no. unboxing the Nvidia GeForce. For the land of sorts outside, I think two takes. Look at this. Look at these clothes. What am I even doing? Like, look at this. Look at this guy. Why That's do I the wear transmitter, such big the clothes. infrared transmitter <laughs> that hooks up to your computer. I'm, I'm figuring out, really, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Like, I've never seen any of this stuff before when I'm opening up the box. So Why is this a I'm about voiceover? To put on the glasses for the because very the audio first was time, missing. And you can see there. <laughs> so, here's me struggling to open the box. Um, we're about to today because our, uh, our microphone. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. We had the receiver for the it on the camera, but we I wasn't actually wearing it. So the camera microphone turns off when I when I don't have that. So here's me struggling to open the box. Um we're about to demonstrate I think that I'm actually standing in a swamp land of sorts outside of our office. Uh we didn't have the lights today, so we we thought we'd just uh, film it outside with the natural light. Uh very natural experience overall. So uh there's the carrying pouch for the glasses <laughs> and then next you'll beautiful <laughs> completely f-ing unwatchable Amazing. like how how did this happen <laughs> i clearly don't deserve it <laughs> what's really remarkable is you didn't get any better <laughs> <laughs> okay next one before you fire me uh this is from sandre do you have any odd pc habits i got taken aback by an answer on a previous wan show to use two trackball mice to improve shortcut capabilities. I agree, but I feel uneasy without fingers on wasid. Two trackball mice? Uh, that one's for me. Uh, it's common in the studio world because you can do chords and have like 700 different shortcuts and just do this. Yeah, see, my ADD would prevent me from remembering any of those shortcuts. <laughs> so the reason why I don't use them either. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um... um, um I have an external number pad that goes on the right side of my mouse pad. So I have a, I have a 10 keyless keyboard. That's not even weird anymore. Is that not weird anymore? Nah. Oh. Yeah, that's just like... I guess I can that's be, a, normie I sh- be a hipster about it now then. I guess. Um, yeah, I did it before it was cool. I did though. Any odd PC habits? Odd PC habits. I don't know. I'm kind of normie. I'm trying to think. You should, um, but you don't have more than one screen. Okay, I guess so. Yeah, I only have one monitor. With your computer setup, I think that's genuinely odd. I, I think it, I would be very surprised if there was like many other people that have that level of a computer setup with one screen. But I'm focused. <laughs> I'm gaming. <laughs> I mean, I have, oh no, I do only have one screen at work. But it's huge. It's 42 inches. It's like, it, it's it's four freaking 21 inch displays. Like, and that's how I, I use it. I use it in quadrants. And I, I use it, so it's a 4K display. I use it at 100% scaling. I have four monitors, Luke. I think whatever habits we would have wouldn't feel weird to us. I think someone else would have to observe them. I don't know. Because I don't feel like I do. Yeah, I don't feel that weird. Okay. Okay, moving on. This is from uh, Humberto. I'm interested in picking up a workshop jacket. Are there any places you wouldn't recommend it be worn? I'm a hobbyist woodworker, welder, and mechanic, and would hate to trash it in two months or so. Well, we were just talking about dating, so maybe not to bed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not on a date, probably. Yeah. I mean, unless, unless like, you guys are going somewhere and you're like doing like metal art, metal yeah. art class. That's yeah. fun. That's a cool first date. Bring two. Um, 
<laughs> Shameless. I <laughs> wouldn't wear it in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If you can trash it in two months, I'll give you a new one. So, like, I wouldn't worry about it. Dang. I wouldn't wear it somewhere super hot. Trust I was I, I was outside wearing it's one of those of bushwhacking, a, it's and it's a, like, it's, she's heavy, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, don't. Uh, this one's an anonymous. Hi, I recently got an internship at NASA. With the team GPL. that drives the Perseverance so, Mars rover. Oh awesome. my gosh, it's so exciting. That made me think, what's some technology that makes you hopeful about our future like space exploration does for me? Almost nothing. Uh, for me, pretty much nothing except for space exploration. Almost all technological advancement has gone in the exact direction I, has, I had hoped it would not. There was a lot of stuff. I was like, man, the future's going to be so cool when you have these things. And then you realize that those things are not, not profitable. the most profitable things. And yeah. then you're like, oh, wait, technological advancement only really goes in the direction of profit. And then you're like, oh, wait, the future's going to be kind of boring in a lot of ways. I hope, it's I hope all res- about like removing human element. And I'd stuff. love to see recycling tech get a lot better. but And, and there's a lot of work being done, which is good but uh there could be a lot more yeah yeah uh this one's from brian apple has a history of shifting the technological landscape will they be successful with their rumored ar slash vr hardware without having seen it it's impossible for me to say but i really doubt it i i I don't know and maybe that's just me being just tired you know i'm tired of people saying like this time, you know, Google Glass, Oculus, it'll, it'll, Quet, Galaxy, whatever. like I just, no, I don't know. I, It's probably going to kind of suck. It'll probably be as good as it can be, but I, I just don't see it. Like phone, yeah, watch, yeah, glasses. Man, it's know. only going to be glasses once it's essentially indistinguishable from normal glasses. And we're so far away from and that. And really good. If ever, if we ever ever get there be really tough okay this one's from drake hey linus as employers how do you and yvonne decide how much to budget for things with no direct return on investment i.e coffee snacks for employees christmas parties etc the christmas party (laughs) i I wouldn't talk about that one yeah christmas party is just like it's man. (laughs) snacks though we go through a lot of snacks I don't, I don't even, I, I can tell you right now, I have no idea how much we spend on snacks. There isn't a budget. We buy a reasonable quantity of snacks. Do you? Okay. And I guess you guys trust that we're not going to spend $1,000 a week. I mean, do you? Actually, probably. Okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's the first time hearing of it. It's snacks for 100 people. I, I never get any. <laughs> Nobody ever brings me snacks. We're, I, don't we're, I don't even Deliver know where Deliver them to my home. Don't take that as an actual instruction. I don't even know where the snacks are. I know where they are, actually, where but I've they? never had any. They're over there. You walk by them I want and you snacks. walk out. No, no, no. Those are the extras. No, forget it. You're, oh. not, you're not allowed those snacks. I'm getting snacks. Well, they're, he, in the, they're in the writer's the kitchen. He's the CEO, bruh. Don't take my snacks. <laughs> he's going to eat all my snacks. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a shelf. Um, I think we, we buy different ones occasionally. Uh, kind of rotate through them. Cool. I believe Ariana's in charge of that now. Some of them are healthy, some of them are not. Callan Ann dropped something off at my house. I don't remember what it was. Mm. Um, I needed it for some Cheeto reason. Cheeto puffs? What is this shit? I don't, I don't think those are... Cheeto puffs are lame. I don't think those are way. approved snacks. Yeah, they're not. Cheeto puffs suck. You want the, like, dense ones, not the puffy ones. Or the crunchy ones. Um, but yeah, Callan Ann was dropping something off. I don't remember what it was. Go XLR, maybe? Really? Or something? Cheeto puffs? Um, the crunchy ones? See? Yeah. I don't think those are snacks we buy. Uh, it's more like granola bars. And he brought me some granola bars. And I was like, that's cool. Is he coming back? I, I don't think so. I all think right. he's going to eat all of the all snacks. Right. Let me, let he me... is within his right <laughs> to. Uh, should we get a po- poll going for puffs versus crunchy? Sure. Uh, do you need me to do that? I, I don't remember. Okay. Probably. Well, let's it doesn't let's matter. pick a question that I can answer, and while I answer the question, I'll do the poll. Um, okay, this one's probably easy for you. Sure. Uh, Luke, what does the day, last day before a week plus vacation look like for you? Oh, God. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's a nice day. 
vacations are like basically an illusion um I took vacation time uh, because I had my wisdom teeth taken out and I am still recovering. Not from the wisdom teeth being taken out, from the vacation time uh, because the amount of backlog that I have of tasks that just piled up, <laughs> a horrifyingly demolished email inbox, uh, lots of other different various things that I'm supposed to catch up on. Like it's the work doesn't, just like go away for me because my the stuff that i do is not redundant there's no one else that does it um so that kind of sucks um for linus it's probably very frantically um hosting lots of videos so they they build a bit of a backlog before he takes off um but yeah Oh, someone made the poll instead of me. Thank you. It was me. Oh, good job. Puff? Not Puff, obviously, because I'm not a heathen. He has found the snacks. I appreciate that you dislike Puffy Cheetos. I don't think it's we buy them. It's not that I dislike them. It's that they shouldn't exist. Yes. I don't agreed. think we buy them. Uh, yeah, so each department gets their own snacks. Editors, writers. The editors don't get enough. There's like only like three granola bars in their entire thing. Yeah. So we should make sure they get more. Make a note. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, they're, they're, that's not my department. That shouldn't be his job, yeah. Yeah, they they have an ongoing order. Yeah, but We're I almost out of Red Bull now. as well. <laughs> okay, I will I will <laughs> scream at probably Ariana. I think that's her job now. What? Uh, no, that can't be that her job. That shouldn't be her job. I don't remember. She has too many other things yeah, going no, on. She, oh, okay. we'll just make Vance do it. Um, um what is uh, Linus? Probably not his job either. Yeah, I don't think that's his job either. It's, it's logistics. Logistics okay. will Can you just email it. Colton and make sure that it is being done by someone that actually makes any sense? I'll, I'll deal with it. It's totally fine. <laughs> Thank you. I shouldn't have upset you. Um, not puffs one by a lot, and that's good. Yeah, they're they're nice. What if you mix them together in a big bowl? Non puffy gang. Uh, uh, Linus, uh, Luke was answering what the last day before a vacation looks like. How about you? <laughs> both of you. A really long day. Yeah. We both answered very negatively. <laughs> so stressful. It's kind of horrible, actually. The last day before I go and the first day back both suck. I'm, I, was, I was saying while you were gone that I'm still recovering from my vacation. I was saying I'm not, I'm done recovering from my teeth sockets, but I'm still recovering from the vacation because there's just, there's so much to claw back on. Like, it's just. Oh my goodness. And then new things are coming in. So it's like, bah, you don't want to leave the new stuff, but then you have to claw back on the old stuff. So it like, oh my goodness, it's hard. And then you just end up working a bunch of overtime and then it's like, why did we do this <laughs> at all in the first place? I don't know. Whatever. Um, moving on. Next question. We're just into potentials now. Do you want me to start reading off some of them? Sure. Hit me. Okay. Uh, Linus is a fold user. Do you have any expectations for the Z Fold 4? It's already out. Okay. <laughs> uh, to Linus, as a fan of older Final Fantasy games, I think, and Sakaguchi, uh, I'm... It's gone. Uh, I'm happy to always hear you mention FF6. Have you started playing Fantasian? Fantasian. Fantasian. Dan! If, if so, what are your thoughts, and have you ever gotten a chance to play FF9? Uh, yeah, Final Fantasy IX is amazing. Uh, one of the best in the series, at least out of what I've played. I haven't played garbage ones that are not six or nine. No, I'm, ki I, I'm kidding. I have played some other ones, but I haven't played many of the mo more modern ones. Uh, Final Fantasy IX was such a return to form after seven and eight. Such a good game. Um, <clears throat> yes, I have started Fantasian. I'm about 14, 15 hours in. It's, uh, it's good. I wouldn't describe the female characters as progressive. Um, it's very traditional in good ways, and it's also very traditional in ways that I feel like gaming has sort of moved past, like the, 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 the uh, hopeless love-struck princess for, like, the brooding bad boy protagonist who treats her like crap is sort of a... a little tired. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a trope that I don't really think needs to make a comeback, and it's there, at least as far as I've gotten. Um, and so... Pretty much everything else, though, the beautiful environments, the way they've done the combat system, like, oh, being able to just, like, walk around and explore 
and then it just queues up like a giant battle and you just fight all the low level baddies at once. It's like, oh, oh, I don't even mind like random battles because it'll just be like, you sent monsters to your little dimension. Um, yeah, really enjoying it so far though. Cool. Hi, Luke and Linus. As a woman in computer science, it's kind of depressing to see so few women involved slash included in the popular tech sphere. Is there a reason there haven't been many women knowledgeable in tech features and videos? We don't feature. Yeah, we don't really feature people, people um, for the most part. Yeah, kind of our it's, own bubble. Yeah, it's man, it's tough. <sighs> I mean. I'm happy to I'm happy to say that tentatively I'm hoping there will be at least one female creator at LTX. Um, confirmations are starting to roll in, but I haven't actually checked with anyone that it's cool to say they're going to be there, so I'm not going to name anybody. But one female creator is uh, hopefully going to be there. Yeah, so it, that's it, good. It, it's it's not like they don't exist, and they exist in very hardcore technical spheres as well. Mm -hmm. but, um, there's just not many. And it's like, it's one of those things where I'm kind of sitting here going, well, okay, on the one hand, like, I, what am I supposed to do, right? Like, I can't, I can't conjure women in the tech sphere. Um, and I also, like, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend they, like, need my help or whatever. Like, I'm not going to mansplain or whatever being in the tech sphere. Like, I... I don't know. I know I, Sh I, Shannon Morse has been, uh, if if you ever watched like Threatwire, Hack Five back in the day or anything like that, she's she's been around forever. Um, awesome content. I don't know. It's 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 tough. Like we can only hire people who apply. Yeah. Like people are pointing out. Well, what about your bubble? Like, shouldn't you just? Chris would be nice for content. Yeah, but like, call me Chris. Does her own thing. And let me tell you, she ain't technical. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, that's fine. I consider her a friend, and I tell her that to her face. But there's a reason that she needed me to come put together her computer. <laughs> like, so that's the thing. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know. We, yeah, we can we can only hire people who apply. Okay. Um, don't normally catch you live, Linus. As a martial artist, I'm curious. Uh, why have you taken a step back from training yourself and focusing on helping teach? I've always found that the best teachers are the ones that are training and improving. Get called out. Uh, well, I didn't take a step back from training myself. I took a gigantic leap, colossal leap back from training myself. I hadn't done any training in 18 years when yeah. I set foot in my daughter's class to help out. Uh, it's because the, re the only reason I'm doing it is to help make them more enthusiastic about their training. I'm, I'm, I'm being a dad. I'm not... I'm not trying to like get to competitive form or anything like that. Uh, I enjoyed it, but the things, the main benefits for me from martial arts, like I'm not, I'm not going to compete. I'm not going to, um, I have other things that I do to stay in shape. Um, the main benefits for me are things like, you know, knowing how to fall safely and stuff like that, which I, which I, I know, and I don't need to go, I don't need to really go practice. Um, yeah, I, I mean, to be clear, I actually have done more training since I like have talked about it. So I booked a two hour private with the, uh, the, the master of their dojo. And we basically ran through everything from like white belt up to like blue, like, like full blue curriculum. Um, and then I got, I have it all on video so that I can go and review. And that's, um, that'll be really helpful for me when I'm like helping out the young kids. But you got to understand, like I'm just helping out in basic classes. I'm I'm showing newcomers things like how to make a fist properly, right? Like I'm, I, I yeah, I, I remember it. I remember it pretty well. It's it's pretty okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I think teaching is a step forward, if anything, because it's completely out of it. Okay, this one's from Andrew, a long time watcher and fan. It has been his experience of his own watching the channel grow over the past 10 years. Time flies. Over the years, what are some positive ways your employees have impacted your professional and personal growth? Telling me when I'm wrong. I mean, that's that's the biggest one is just like helping helping keep our, our guiding star where it should be. 
Um, and I think everyone here deserves a ton of credit for that. No, they don't. Um, <laughs> telling you you're wrong. Uh, this is from Haley. Hey, Thank Linus, <laughs> take my physical riding test for a motorcycle in a month. Woo! How nervous were you to take your test? Would you have any tips for someone who has a little over 70 hours under my belt? Well, well, one tip would be that you have so much more riding experience than I did when I did my test that there's no excuse for failing if you do yourself. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, that's really great. You've done a really good job of preparing yourself. Uh, I will say that I wasn't particularly n nervous about the test itself because by the time I did my riding test, I had like 10 years of driving experience almost. No, not maybe eight years. I don't know. I, I had a lot of driving experience. I drove a lot. So however long I'd been driving, I had done a lot of driving in that time. Uh, so it's the same road here. Anyway, it's the same road test for a motorcycle or a car. So I had already done my car road test and drove a lot. So I just had to do it on a bike. The thing that made me nervous was that the only place I could get an appointment was Richmond. And there's got to be something in the water because driving in Richmond is terrifying. Um, just pretty little regard for things like, man, I almost got, I almost got hit like three weeks ago, uh, because fortunately I'm a super defensive driver slash defensive rider. So I am always head on a swivel, assuming that every other car on the road is a complete f***ing idiot. Like that's how I drive. So good way to go. I was turning left and a car was turning right into two lanes. Now we should both maintain lane position and we should both be able to go at the same time. Because I am a defensive driver, I didn't go. Yeah, you never trust that. I, I, I slowed down a little bit. Without looking, they went whoop, straight into my lane. Would have just hit me. Would have just nailed me. Um, Only time I've ever had to use my e-brake as anything other than a parking brake was yeah, driving an NCIX back in the day. <laughs> Man, the, uh, the, the pillar in the parking garage at Aberdeen Mall is covered in so many different colors of luxury car paint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I like once, actually a thing. I once saw someone hit it, like they took the turn too tight and they, they hit it, and instead of backing up and like going around... Did they like push through? They just floored it. <laughs> so instead of one panel being damaged, <sighs> it was basically the entire side of the car. Oh. I couldn't believe my eyes. I just, I've never seen anything like it before or since. That's wild. I don't know. I got oh. this one from John. Hi, Linus, Luke, and Dan. Two questions. I am in Human Computer Interaction course. HCI. Mm. Are there any interfaces you use that make you frustrated? Just brought a stream deck, and have you considered doing a long-term review or a revisit? But, uh, yeah. Uh, no, probably not going to revisit the Steam Deck anytime soon. We'll take a look at where the software has gotten to once, like, a Steam Deck 2 launches or something like that. Uh, we did take a look at the uh, new accessory, the dock, the deck dock. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, other than that, I don't think the experience has changed much other than just generally getting better and better and better and better and better. There's, I wouldn't have much else to say at this point. As for interfaces that make me frustrated, I mean... I'd have a hard time finding an interface that doesn't make me frustrated at times. I think that's probably pretty, pretty normal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Study hard. Do great work. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. We need you. This one's from Colin. Linus rewatched the original Jasco video. And while I can relate to the frustrations of customer support policies, mm. I found the way you treated a support rep with no control over the policy cringeworthy. Was there any debate over including that? Uh, no, it was included. I never looked at the video before it was published. Um, frankly, I mean, I didn't swear. I didn't insult them. Um, I was extremely frustrated. I made it very clear. I will never go straight for that card, but I got to tell you, um, I don't make the rules about what works. And unfortunately, from my experience, that's the way to get escalated to someone higher up. And that sucks. Uh, people should just help you immediately but a lot of places that i've interacted with have policies where unless you get mad you just don't get any help so i was i was pulling a lever um i was very much in control when i was talking to them so like i said I, you know i'm not going to personally attack them or anything like that because obviously they um 
I, I know absolutely nothing about them. But what I will tell you is that something that that individual did do that did rub me the wrong way was they basically, you know, used the, the textbook. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like a script being used on me. Um, unfortunately is not is not fortune that is a, that is a decision that was made that's not fortune that's not chance it's not luck uh, it's not lucky or unlucky it's a decision they that was have made to. and so when you basically stonewall and go no you can't talk to anyone else so a i can't do anything for you and b no you can't talk to anyone who can well yeah you're going to get some venting because you can do that you choose not to and ultimately, when I did speak to someone, guess what? The policy was stupid and the policy got changed. So maybe if instead of stonewalling customers, however many times that has happened, that feedback was passed along, we would be in a different situation by the time I had to call. So yeah, I, I guess I, I just don't buy it. Um, on the one hand, yeah, I understand that frontline support workers get a lot of, uh, get a lot of grief. But at the end of the day, as a customer, they are literally the only means you have of getting a message to anyone behind them. So what are you supposed to do? Not express frustration with a phenomenally stupid policy that makes absolutely no sense? I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough, I guess. I always to, try to add in like, I know this isn't on you, but I am pissed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, on a bit of a lighter note, this is from Justin. Do you plan to add any more Lego decor around your house? I thought the flowers were an awesome idea and might look really good with an Imperial <laughs> Star Destroyer. Uh, Luke, do you, go. <laughs> do you have any Lego decor? Uh, some, actually, yeah. My, I, I don't, I, I think actually not originally inspired by you guys because i don't think she had seen them yet right uh but my girlfriend is like recently obsessed with lego and has nice. gotten a lot of the similar things that's awesome like the little plants and flowers and stuff plenty yeah. time yeah <laughs> um, Makes sense. we have the piano i'm sure my wife will buy more stuff i don't know going here from nathan what is a device or item that you almost always buy cheaply or isn't worth buying expensive this is a company purchase He's bought a couple screwdrivers. Oh. We nice. design, install custom solar slash battery slash inverter systems nice. with a focus on specialty vehicles. Cool. Bought my driver in and now buying some for our shop. Oh, that's awesome. Sweet. A device that I cheap out on. Is it a device? Yeah. Or item. Yeah, yeah just something uh, I, I cheap out on. Snacks for around the office? I, I never buy fancy wow. I never buy fancy water cooling coolant. Okay, yeah. Just, I always just use tap water with some biocide in it All because right. I just don't care. Our tap water is like decently good. Like it, we don't have really hard uh, tap water, so eh. Anything for you, Luke? I mean, you just don't buy Everything, anything ever. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not 100% true. He doesn't um, buy clothing. Free. That I. You guys don't... Oh, you have shorts but now. It's good. <laughs> um, it's good clothing. You don't have socks yet. Those aren't Why aren't the socks coming? Uh, okay, this one's from Eli. Hi, Luke and Linus. Here from America, thinking our capitalistic healthcare system sucks too. I'm wondering what your thoughts on are. Uh, I wonder what your thoughts on video game cheating, where it's widely accepted, like 2B2T in That's a Minecraft. a different situation. I don't even know what 2B2T is. Uh, it's like a lawless Minecraft server, as far as my understanding goes. Is that right? Oh, well, yeah, as long as everyone understands. Yeah, then it doesn't matter. It's not yeah. even cheating. It's just engaging in a variety of ways. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's like, it's the exact same caveat that I threw in where I was like, we're talking about multiplayer games. You know, this is, sure, it's a multiplayer game, but it's accepted. So, like, who cares? Yeah, it it's matter. only when it's deceptive that it's a problem. Yeah. If I start cheating playing a game with my friends, you know, yeah, it's fun. Or if it's allowed. Uh, but this one here's from Nicholas. Hey, Luke and Linus, any product launches that performed way better than expected and any that were the exact opposite? L thank you very much. <coughs> Love the show. Oh, man, you guys are asking really hard questions tonight. Yeah, Either that or my brain on. is just dumb. Yeah, there's also a lot of them. The, all of the questions tonight were so good, which is why I had to do so oh. many. Man, this is tough. You're going to know this a lot better than me. I think more people should buy the uh, ABCs of gaming. It has 
five stars. Okay. More people should buy this. Yeah, it's a book. It's adorable. Exactly what you pay for a board <laughs> book. Okay. Also, my infant loves it. Okay. Oh, they didn't get the pre bonus items. Well, you got to contact support. Yeah. What do you. Don't. Ugh. Everyone loved that. Okay. Start of a nursery collection. Let's go. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Everyone should buy the ABCs of gaming. Uh, to be clear, we've sold tens of thousands of copies, so I, d I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but it's it, more people should have it. The, the this question is technically phrased than expected, not than you expected, which I know still applies. Don't worry about it. Um, but I'm going to take this as other people. I think the screwdriver and the backpack both outperformed what external people expected. Oh yeah, probably. But I was I was reasonably confident. Oh, I mean, I was sure. stressed because it was. Like such a huge gamble, but yeah, the screwdriver performed I got, better I got than a I lot expected. Of, because of our wave system. You could actually tell like exactly how many we had sold. Um, I got a lot of messages of people being like, "Whoa!" It's like, yeah, we're a screwdriver company now, boy. I know, right? <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, this one's from Eric. Recent smartphone releases have been iterative slash yep. boring. Are there any new features? on the horizon that could get you excited for new phones. No. Nope. They could bring back SD cards. It, it would be bringing back old features that they've got rid of. Yeah. There's more than just SD card, in my opinion, but there's a few different things. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty into foldables. I, he's not, but I am. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. IR yeah. Blaster. Your screen's it's gross. Classic. All the foldable screens are gross. Uh, this one's from Tim. Last one. I'm sad my old, witty, think geek shirts are wearing away to rags. <laughs> And I have yep. no way to replace them. Since TG is effectively dead, could you consider imitating or seeking a license to reprint them? I, I don't think so. I like the style that we're aiming for. I like the mostly subtle. Um, yeah. This one's not that subtle. <laughs> yeah, but it's like engineering diagram. I don't know. It's yeah. very, it's very uh, unoffensive. Yeah. That's all I got for you. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, I'm text replying to them feverishly here from the incoming messages. There's 26. Uh, we must have had a good launch today because a lot of people were like, yes, I will part with my money in order to have that um, new product that you guys launched. Um, uh Okay, uh, hey I've gonna... been watching for a long time. Is, you can, uh, yeah, anyways. I was going to rapid fire these. Right. Uh, the LTT store is in USD only because it simplifies pricing and collection of uh, and calculation of like margins and all of that because all of our costs are in US dollars pretty much. Not all, but mostly. So we might as well just set our price in US dollars. Uh, oh, what's happening to these? Are, are Some people... of them are getting archived. Oh, are they? Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. yes, uh, investor demands for returns te are terrible and will hurt innovation. So, yeah, Mark C, it's 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 bad, it's bad. Uh, Todd, first time buyer, y'all are streaming. Hey, hi, love everything and have a go. Oh, okay, uh, show. Okay, perfect. We're we're going through these together. Oh no, let's go. People are duplicating. Actions. Instead of making boring fixed screwdrivers, have you considered a series of handles with interchangeable shafts? We've considered it. We are not going to do it, and the reason for that is that you would add slop. And we don't really want to do that. Uh, Elon overtly uses bots to fluff of comments. His social media posts automatically. Do you feel that he had early access to chat GPT type AI? I mean, I don't know. Overtly uses? Yeah, I, I don't think, I think he think uses it on uh, purpose. I think that's... Um... Yeah. When you ran your Thunderbolt cable through your wall, did you find a way to do it without having the cable stick out of a wall plate? No, there's no Thunderbolt keystone. You won't find that. Sorry. Rewatch the original Jessica. Oh, yep. Yeah, nope. Archive. We just saw, talked about that one. Okay, there's only nine left. These Let's... are all uh, rejected. Uh, yeah, go for it. They are? Yep. Yeah, thought... Bottom right. I thought all they... rejected. Rejected? What? These are the potential ones that were rejected. What? Really? I don't know. Read them if you want. But, but we talked about the computer human interaction one. Hi, Luke, says Anonymous. Uh, perfect. With the challenge over, have you gone back Hi. to 7900 XTX? Yes. <laughs> well, that's the next challenge. Yeah, I'm replying. Uh, okay, we did this one. Archive. 
Uh, okay, why are you guys adding potential rejected? We should just archive them? I why, don't know. Why'd they go back to incoming? They get pulled back into incoming for... It's, I think it, it should be that, archived. No, 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 no. I remember, I remember. Conrad explained this. Because oh. if you just archive, it doesn't show it. Yeah. So it needs to pop back out so you can decide what to do with it. Either reply to it, show it, archive okay. it, whatever. Okay, this is user error. Sorry, Conrad. Nice. It's nice. An intelligent system. <gasps> My Black Shaft screwdriver was stolen from me this week. Do you have a plan to release something to secure it to your pocket or belt instead of having it loose? Yes! I want to do a holster. <laughs> like a cringe dad holster. Would it secure it, though? Because that's, that's what... Yeah, with, like, with like snaps. Yeah! Oh, boy. That's okay. what I want to do. Yes, we have a plan. All right, that's it. That's all. See you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye! <laughs>